Yo, what's up, everybody? And welcome to uh, my podcast, I guess. I really need to get these intros down a bit better. But anyway, my name is Adam, and I'm going to be your uh, your host for this evening. And today, I am joined by two guests, two friends. We've got, if you're watching on the screen, I actually don't know which way around this is going to be recording, but we've got James Hatfield in one corner, who's waving right now, if you're watching this on YouTube. And we've got Andrew Strang down the Yo. bottom on my screen, but I don't know where he is on everybody else's. And if you're listening on Spotify... Welcome to the random voices you're going to hear. So, uh, Strang's the one with the Scottish accent, and James is the one uh, with the Northampton accent. <laughs> 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 so, I thought uh, this has been a, a topic of conversation between me, my friends, um, especially these two, for a, for a little while. And I thought, what better guests I could get on to discuss this topic um, <clears throat> that is uh, currently plaguing our our industry and everything that I love and hold dear to my heart. And uh, we'll get to the main crux of it later, but the, the general theme is going to be Japanese cars and the prices and if they're worth what they're now going for. Um, so let's uh, start, though, by introducing the two guests for today. So we'll start with James. You're at the top of my screen, so we'll go with you. Um, can yeah. you tell us who you are, where you're from, what you do? And uh, then I'll ask you a couple more questions before we go further. Um, so my name is James Hatfield, as you know well, um, or Tech Boy, if people know me on, well, I guess from way back, Civic Life. Uh, <laughs> Street Legal. <laughs> Street Legal, yeah, DK9 Forum. Um, I've been doing cars and this sort of thing for, oh, what, nearly 30 years? No, probably more than that. Well, no, 20, 20 ish years maybe into cars. You know, when we were kids, we used to be into it and then sort of got into it as a trade and worked my way through dealerships and now I've been working in motorsport for nearly six years. So, um, yeah, and avidly fond of Hondas and anything Japanese, really. So I've been into this subject for a long time, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah, as you def well know, but, definitely. Yeah. Um, Strang, I'm gonna. I'm probably going to refer to these two boys, by the way, as Tegboy and Strang throughout this, not by their like first names. So, uh, Strang, if you don't mind taking the floor, who are you? How might people know you? So, name's Andrew Strang from Scotland. I run a page called Final Boss, which um, is a sort of Facebook page dedicated to Japanese car scene with a kind of focus on drifting. Um, I've been into the, the Japanese car scene for 20 years, 20 plus years. Um, I've done drift events, I've imported cars for a living, so I've got a pretty good idea on how the prices have increased over the years and stuff like that as well. So, yeah, just all about Japanese cars and drifting, basically. Cool. Well, before we dive into the main, uh, I think, Strang, you know I made you turn your microphone all the way up. Can you turn it down a little bit now? Because I think I'm getting some pretty nasty, like, echo. <laughs> Um, but, but while Strang does that, uh, James, uh, Take Boy, I'd quite like to get yeah. uh, for the audience out there a little bit of your car history, what you had when you first started into the modified car world, and uh, yeah. then uh, carrying on from that, really, to what you're at now. So, Hondas, with a few that aren't Hondas. <laughs> so, <laughs> that makes um, where did I start? 1.3 Civic DX EG. Um, then various CRXs, VT, VTIs, non-VTIs, uh, DC2 Integra Type R, um, more Civics, uh, a couple of Accords. And then most people know me for in, when did I buy it? 2007, late 2007, early 2008, I bought an EK9. Um, I still own it. I will never sell it. And it's gone, well, it was originally built as a track car, B18 in it out of the DC2 that I crashed. And then I've had it ever since. So I've been off the road for a while now, bought a house or had a few houses, had kids, but the car's not gone anywhere. Currently, um, K24 swapping it. And hopefully this summer, it will be back up and running on the road and maybe a few track days. But that's basically um, just that's it. And then, I, I, I mean, working in motorsport for these last few or well, five, six years, I think it's you get to see another side of, I guess classic Ford stuff, uh, high-end motorsport stuff, which mm. it's an interest because it that sort of scene or the classic Ford stuff seems to be where the Japanese stuff is going. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it kind of it's it's an interesting topic at the minute. As you like, we're all like scratching our heads because we've been doing this for however many years. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, we can go and buy we can go and buy K 
cars for a couple of grand and now you cannot it just doesn't happen so no, no, yeah. no. it's a, it's an odd one isn't it it is strang can yeah. you please fill us in because i know your your list of cars is extensive um oh. <laughs> give us a quick rundown of some of the you don't um, need to tell us all about your nah. ass daily cars but all the cool import shit you've had that'd be cool just to run through. well obviously through the import and stuff i've had well over 100 japanese cars like well over uh, <laughs> my my first my first fast car was a DC2 Type R, so I do get the Honda thing, and I mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. love that car. That car cost me like three grand. Oh. I mean, I mean, how much would that be today? Oh, you know I mean, mean, I saw a rotten one. <laughs> I saw a rot. We'll get into this, but like, yeah. I saw a rotten one. I'm talking rotten at the top of the windscreen, under the windscreen seals, all rotten. Seven and a half grand, and it was a UK car, <laughs> dude. What the fuck? Anyway, carry on. <laughs> so I had, I had I had a DC2. That was my first like good car. Um, after that, I had a that was at 19, which is a pretty cool car at 19. Very um, cool car at 19. I had a 330 horsepower S13 at 19 as well, which is my first rear-wheel drive car, which was fucking sick. Um, and then after that, I kind of just kept moving on to like another S body, another S body, like Pulsar GTIRs, Evos, Impressas, all the kind of all the sort of JDM stuff that I always wanted. Um, always fancied an 86. So when when I started importing cars, I was like, right, let's get some 86s on the go. And so 86s, I've had a, a D1 86, which you've seen, Adam, the yep. Wins Auto car. Yeah, the yellow one. I've had, yeah, I've had um, BN Sports, Tokyo Auto Salon demo cars. And basically, as from Hondas to like full-on D1 drift cars, I've had pretty much everything in between. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, I've got two 86s and a 370Z. And that's the kind of stable at the moment. I'm so glad you didn't buy a 350Z. <laughs> 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 he chewed my ear all off oh. about 350Zs for months. I think even one point I was like, if you're ringing me up about 350Zs, mate, you I'm just going to hang up, up on you. I was like, shut up, mate. I'm not playing this game anymore. Um, <clears throat> if anybody has come across the podcast, not from being a subscriber or whatever, and don't know who I am, uh, my name's Adam. I've had... Uh, a very high interest in in Hondas, especially Hondas, since way before I could even drive. My first car was a Honda. That that was when me and Teg Boy met through the Honda forums. Um, every I've I've had a Honda my whole adult life, apart from three months, which was the in between of selling my FN one and getting my EG six. So that was like the the difference in um, me owning a car. Was it FN one? Was it when I sold my DC five? It was one of the two. I can't remember. It was I can't remember. I, I basically just got a BMW as a daily car. And I was like, I need to have another Honda. So I actually made Tech Boy come with me. <laughs> I, I paid him for the day because it was a day out of work for him to come and uh, check out the EG and make sure it wasn't completely fucked. The geezer banged on more about the sound system in it, didn't he, about that than the yeah, actual car. God, so annoyed. The speakers didn't even work. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but it, was, it was a good time anyway. Did you it worked? What's that, sorry? The mobilizer worked. Yeah, mobilizer fucking worked. Yeah, you opened yeah. the glove box on the way home. The car turned off on the motorway. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Scared the shit out of me. Um, uh, other than that, I've had multiple Type R's, DC5. I've, the only Honda Type R I'm yet to own is, a, other than an NSX, is the FD2, uh, FN2, and a DC2. They're the only Type R's I haven't owned. Um, but I, I have an driven FD2. them. Me too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the problem with them, like all of them, is the prices are skyrocketing. So and expensive. It, yeah, it makes me feel yeah. sick. But they never really dropped in price. Um, they never dropped. They never no. dipped. They never, no. never really dipped below twelve thousand for a bad one. So they, they were always an expensive yeah. car. Um, yeah. yeah. Other than the Hondas, I've dipped my feet in a little bit with Nissans. I had a three fifty Z for three months. That was the worst three months of my life. I then uh, got an S fifteen, which is a perfect car for me because i'm just in a toxic relationship with it like every other relationship i have um with anything <laughs> that isn't family so I, i'm very accustomed to the japanese uh modified life the, the driving around the japanese cars uh i i, I there, it's a it's a, a proper passion for me as you can probably if you're watching on the screen see all the cars on the skateboards and stuff and the asaka jdm fly like there is a big just, and I can see behind Strang, you've got initial D DVDs and shit. Yeah, like, you know I mean? like, DVDs and, I, and I can see in Tech Boys, you've got a racing seat. So, like, you know, that's all. Uh, yeah, hang on a minute. Is that your sim setup or is that one out of your car? So, these are these are under the sim. Well, okay. I'm... What are these? Okay, we've got our, our option DVDs. Yeah, okay. yeah <laughs> that's what I've got in the show. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah, brilliant. Best moment. So, we're, we're, the, these yeah. two boys are, yeah. 
These two boys are two of the lads that I've I've known the longest and also known that are in deep with the unfortunate lifestyle choice that is the cars that we can't yeah. have a break from, it seems. that. Uh, so I wanted to get you guys on, uh, introduce your cars so people understood your background in it and uh, understanding that you're not just a, a hype kid off of Instagram. Um, because I think you know that, that that's basically what the, yeah. the car world has come down to now, isn't it? Having a, a yeah. Yeah. fucking hot Instagram account that's all that really matters to most people now. Which is, uh, I wish I did have a hot Instagram account, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, I don't, so uh, <laughs> you know, we don't we don't grow over there, we just post the same pictures all the time. Um, I just wanted to get some honest chat about this from people that aren't that, that could benefit from it because both of you have cars that will be worth a lot of money now in your garages as do i um that when we bought them may not have been as valuable um and how that could be a positive but it's also a massive negative to people like us that have lived this for more than the last six months and since instagram's become popular if that makes sense you know since they've become fashion accessories that's really realistically what they've become now um so what was the attraction for both of you let's get a bit more background before we jump into this but like, what was the attraction for both of you to the japanese cars initially and we'll start with james we'll, we'll, we'll go in that order so uh simple one i left school uh, got a job at a honda dealership in northampton and the first day i was there i got taken out in a quarter type r that was it that's okay. it this, yeah my next door neighbor at the time also had a dc2 we're talking 2000 so it was it would a have been a 98 99 brand new car yeah um that was i was used to look at that i think jesus christ that is a cool car i mean you yeah. had that brand new and then yeah just working at honda dealerships i did often two honda dealerships um and then i mean even going to bm i did nearly 12 years at bmw mm-hmm. nothing shook my passion for even the small periods I was at the Honda dealerships at. Um, and then it kind of, that's just, it just grew from there. There was a, a desire to own what I'd worked on. Um, yeah, just went from there, really. Once you get your license, buy a Civic, and away you go. That's it. You're stuck in it then, aren't you? You can't get away from it. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Strang, what was yours like? Well, I've kind of always been into cars. Um, my dad was as a mechanic. Well, he was. He doesn't work as one now. Um, so I kind of grew up with Hot Wheels and all that stuff mm-hmm. as well. Um, but I think the Japanese influence comes from like Gran Turismo. Yeah, um, for yeah. speed. Um, you know, I grew up playing those games as probably you guys did. Um, Fast mm-hmm. and the Furious. So when I grew up, I, I, I wasn't looking at, oh, I really want a Ferrari or I want a Lamborghini or I want a Porsche. It's like, oh, I want a Supra or I want an Evo or I want a, you know, an 86 or a 180SX or something like that. That's the kind of cars that I idolized. Mm-hmm. And it's probably because of those games and those films yeah. and stuff like that. That's just, that's what our generation's into. Yeah. You know, my, my dad's generation were probably into like Cosworths and, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah, yeah. that sort of stuff. Definitely. Um, so, that's what it comes from from me definitely cool. well for my my own personal background on this is very similar to to james's and yours you know like growing up with uh gran turismo especially i think um and the hot wheels side of stuff but hot, obviously hot yeah. wheels is kind of a generalized that, that's just kind of the way that your parents get you into these yeah. dark habits yeah, of cars yeah. regardless of what brand it ends up being that you fall for right like you could yeah. you could yeah. start with we could have all started with hot wheels um, on the same day and one of us could be in a Volkswagen and the other could be into American muscle and the other exactly. could be, you know, just because they, they catch, they capture you, don't they? You know, um, I think uh, the, the Gran Turismo, I think the Gran Turismo stuff, I really think back to that because I used to sit on that game and do you know what car I think I used the most? The Prelude. I think, I don't know what it was about the Honda Prelude on that game, but I just felt it was the best looking car on that game. I was like, yeah. it's so, it's such a cool car. Um, I also feel like obviously Gran Turismo was the first game you could like really dive into tuning cars and see the cars yeah. change yeah. them when you drive them on track um yeah. i i always blame gran turismo for everything really because when i yeah. look back like when i was growing up i was into japanese stuff the hondas basically and dodge vipers and though yeah. the hondas and dodge vipers on them games were the ones that had the crazy liveries right yeah. so the, the dodge vipers you could have fluorescent orange or fluorescent yellow i think yeah wasn't it oh, and then all the Honda, yeah. yeah and then all the hondas were like spoon sports liveries you know that and that sort of yeah. stuff and it was like when i was a kid i didn't really know what i was doing i was just like that's a cool car i want to use cool, that yeah. do you know what i mean so um and the also, predominant you know, thing as well the predominant thing as well was gran turismo was a japanese game so yeah. most of the cars on there were oh, japanese i mean what's the car, you, you, what's the car you, you did your first license in 
Demi on. Demi on. Master Demi on. Master Demi on. I remember that shit. Like, because I was just like, what the fuck is a Master Demi on? Because back in the day, I used to read, instead of comics and stuff, I used to read Top Marks magazine, right? Yeah. Like, that was just something I'd sit through Top Marks and memorize all the options the cars come with and sell for. And I, that was like the best thing in my life was just having that. Yeah. Do, you know what, do you know what I mean? And yeah. like, I'd go through it and I was like, I've never seen a Mazda Demio. It was like the game had trolled me. It was like, yeah, yeah you think you know anything about cars? Well, here's a Mazda fucking Demio. Do you know what that is? And it opened up this whole world of like Japanese stuff to me. And I was like, okay, there's, there's more than meets the eye. Do you, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And uh, I don't know about you guys as well, but obviously in my team, my young, my youth and my teens, like Max Power and all that was hot. Yeah. And that was hot. And, I love Max Power. Uh, yeah, and uh, I can't remember yeah. which magazine it was, whether it was Max Power or Fast Car, but one of them had a Banana EG in it, okay? It, that's what they called it, the Banana EG. And it, you might even remember this. It was a yellow EG that yeah. was rough as balls by any standard <laughs> by now. And like, uh, this car even come up for sale. <laughs> and uh, when I must have been 19, 18, 19, and I remember putting it on the Civic Life Forum, and you might remember him, James, uh, Bongwater. I used yeah, to yeah. wind him up. Something yeah. chronic, that guy. I used to purposely just wind him up. My my whole goal of every day was just to be to get him a bite on that forum because it was just it was so <laughs> funny. Well, so he like me and him kind of had like this little like I don't, I never hated the guy. I didn't know him. Do you know what I mean? I didn't even know what his real name was. I didn't know what he looked like or nothing. But it was just like one of those things like just wind this poor fella up every day, and uh, like so I never expected him to be on my side in any argument. Like he was always opposite because obviously people used to know me as AJ back in the day. So like he'd be whatever AJ says is wrong sort of thing. And uh, he um, even messaged me when I posted up the banana EG for sale. He was like, I know we've got our differences, but don't buy that car. <laughs> he was like, it is a bag of shit. But that car, I remember seeing it. It was yellow EG with a carbon bonnet, um, bucket seats in it, and wrote a slipstream. So obviously, like Rager lookalikes. And like, yeah. when I saw that, I was just like, I want an EG. Like, that was all, yeah. all I could think was like, that is the yeah. coolest looking car I've ever seen. So I think my, <laughs> like, you know, like the magazine, the, gen the general thing that we all like think you know is like the vid like, not so much the videos for me because the internet wasn't a thing back then <laughs> you know wow. but like magazines yeah, do you remember the DVDs you used to get in max power the yeah magazine, you get a dvd so do you remember you beast from the east dvd i do I yeah yeah that. i do remember, I remember that that was, that was mind-blowing <laughs> yeah i it was sad i even still remember that now like i watched some of the yeah, clip the other day of it on youtube just for like nostalgia sake yeah. yeah um yeah. so that back then though this was when, <laughs> like, I remember these conversations, like, like, like nothing. Like, as we were growing up through the, through the shows, especially me and James have got more of a history in the back in the day side of stuff because we were in the same car club. And because you were the Honda guy, I naturally was drawn to you because I was like, well, we've got the same interest instead of all like the body kits and, you know, the sound yeah. systems and stuff. You like building like fast Hondas and I want to do that. You know, like that was what it was. I even sent you a photo yeah. the other day, didn't I? Like, what, 13 yeah. years ago or something when I shot your EK9 in that unit? Um, yeah, so, like, we, we, we go way back. But back then, the cars were... And I, I'm going to say... Because I don't think you... I don't think, especially James will... I think James is definitely going to disagree with me this. But I, I think that the cars were so good back then because the car you got for your money. So, yeah. so when what I mean by that is that... You, when when I was like 21, you could pick an EK9 up for three and a half thousand pound. Like it wasn't uncommon to see one listed for four thousand, yeah. and you well, at four thousand. No EK9, yeah. EK9. So DC2s are similar. Yeah. So you obviously yeah. had that. I got offered a DC2 when I was 18, 17, 18, when I worked at Honda again by the service guy who had one, and he lost his license for speeding in it. Like he was doing silly speeds in this thing. It was a UK <laughs> car. Little, little bit rusty on the arches, but nothing drastic. And he goes, "Just give us three grand for it, and you can have it." Like it's just sat there in it. And I was like, I "Don't, don't think it's worth it." Do you know what I mean? A like bit back then, a bit it, expensive, mate. For like a rusty <laughs> yeah. one, I was like, "Dude, I'll, uh, let's go two and a half. If you can go two and a half or whatever," I was saying, like you know, then then maybe I'll consider it. And he was like, "No, I really need three for it, man. Like I can't go any lower." And I, I was just being stubborn because back then they were a dime a dozen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you could yeah. go on eBay and type yeah. in DC two, and you'd have fifty to choose from. Yeah, and like yeah. It, it wasn't a, a, a thing. So back then, spending three grand on a let's say let's say four let's say five grand to be conservative on a good EK9, you would be able to put two thousand pounds worth of mods on that instantly because you know you had like the likes of like you know let's just taggy wire and all that sort of stuff that sold all the parts that you could bolt straight on, and uh, you'd have a, a track car slash cool road car that realistically would hold its own against anything. 
like anything big power, like M3s. All right, M3s are going to pump you on a straight on a track, but you are on their ass in a corner. And, it, you know, because you're so much lighter, you can run good brakes and you can, you can stick it to them. And it was always a little joy of mine. I paid £2,000 for my EG6. And uh, all we did was put coilovers, wheels with shite tires because i bought them regs with t1rs on and they were oh. turd Mate, they were... i used to run i used yeah. to run t1rs yeah, i liked were... them i thought they were good back in the day but they were actually shit yeah like I they're, 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 yeah. They're, they're good until you try a good tire yes. <laughs> like yeah. you're like oh i, <laughs> oh, I get it of, um, good year eagle f1s after the t1rs and i was like ah uh, this is what good tires are like. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I accidentally, I, well, I didn't accidentally level up. I just kind of like ultra leveled up. I got AO4 E8Rs and like, I can't buy anything else now. That's the problem. You get, you get too accustomed to the good, the good, good. Pilot Sport 4Ss are amazing as well. They are, they're good, but they're not they're, AO4 E8R. No, but as a road tire. <laughs> as a road tire, yeah, they're, they're, they're brilliant. That's what I run on my M3. Yeah. Um, so for me, a big, big part of it, and I want to get both of your guys' opinions on this, uh, was that you could buy a car for way cheaper than all the other cars and have a way better time. And it was cheaper to do so. The mods were cheaper. The community was so tight and compact. If, I, if you needed a hand, someone was at the end of the phone. You know, and like, yeah, I think I, there was multiple times where on the forum, someone would be like, oh man, I need this part for the interior. I can't find it. And I'd be like, well, I'm throwing one away. I'll just give it to you. You know, and it was like, I'll oh, just send it. It's all right. Don't worry about anything. Just sort me yeah. out. Find these stuff. That's what it used to be like. And I think it is still like that within a t- like the old school guys. You know, like everyone's yeah. kind of got their own little tight knit groups now where you can be like, yo, man, I need this. Like, can you help me out? And it's like, instead of being out, put it on a forum because we all know what toxicity is like on. Are you even on Facebook, James? You're not, are you? No, like nope. it, the, the toxicity wow. on some of these yeah. platforms is, is vile. Yeah. So you couldn't even have a, an 86 without Facebook because the community is so close and you can't get the parts. Mm. Yeah. You just can't get the parts, but because everyone's pretty sound and usually guys in the 86 community will sell the parts for reasonable prices to each other. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I still think that's quite similar in, in the Honda scene, but yeah. I don't mean that in terms certain of certain people. I don't, yeah. yeah, I definitely don't mean that in terms of the grand scale of things. So I sold, um, do you know Leon Lambert? I'm not going to say how much I sold him something for, but like he's a Honda guy in, in Holland or Netherlands. Um, he's fucking sick. If you don't know Leon Lambert, check him out on, fa- on Facebook under Louis. No, I've never heard of him. Never uh, heard of him. He's got, he's, he, he um, basically re- rebuilds Hondas in his garage at home and he does it as a right. job as well. Like, so he'll rip rust repair cars and like rebuild cars for people, but he builds cars how we used to build cars. Everything has to be genuine. Everything takes time. It's all like, all right, well, I might have had the car four years, but it's not done yet. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like instead of now where it's like this Instagram, I call it the Instagram effect, but it's the same on everything. I get the same on YouTube where if a car's not finished in two or three months and turned over and then the next one's around, everyone loses interest. It's just what it is. Whereas yeah. back in the forum days, you'd have for your forum page would be like 800 pages long and everyone having conversation in it. And it'd be like eight years long. This conversation. I used to love that. Oh, just me going too. through all the builds oh, and stuff. Amazing. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, obviously then photo bucket did a yeet, so it like removed oh. all the photos of all the forums, so you can't really see them anymore until you, unless you install something. I can't be asked. I'm not technologically advanced enough for that shit. But my, yeah, going back to my point is that you could buy a car like a Honda, especially the Hondas, for like a bank. I I, I see the same with Nissans as well because to me a Honda Civic is just a Honda Civic. Okay, like as sick as the K9 Type R is, I I still put that as my favorite hot hatch ever. Like, hands down, no matter what I've driven, the EK9 Type R is is my favorite car I've ever owned. It's my favorite car I've ever driven. But seeing, like, them up for sale now for, like, 16, 17,000 pounds, I, like, choke on my own phlegm. Yeah, they're just going up as well. There's, I don't know if you guys have seen the one that's for sale in Japan for 68,000 pounds. The yellow one. Yeah, the yellow one. one. It's got 60,000 kilometers on it. It's not even that low a mile. I was like... Uh, he's, He's reaching. I think he's trying to push the prices yeah. up for his other cars. That's what I think he, yeah. this, this guy's doing. I think he's a well, dealership that's got one up for mad money that he probably doesn't even want to sell. That he's just yeah. like, well, fuck it, we'll just keep that one and we'll just drive all these others up at 20, 30,000 pounds. Um, I think they're just that, waiting that, for the right American to come along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what they're doing. Well, that, that black one sold for, what was it, 68? 60 something, 60 something. 60 60 something. Kilometers, so it is... I, yeah, but when you say something like that, and I, I needed to make this point as well, because when you get a a car that is as 
amazing as the EK9 that has such a historical presence in the car community as the EK9. And it's, a, it's like a god tier car, isn't it? The EK9 is like a, a god tier Japanese import car, like an 8086 is. They have fandoms yeah. of them cars. Yeah. Like, um, the, for instance, it hasn't happened with like the Integra DC5. There are people that like the DC5. I don't think it will. I don't think the I, DC5. I, I, I don't think it will. Think what happens is, and it's happened with the Skylines and all the other cars I've looked at, people can't afford a DC2, so they go, yeah. what's well, the next, the next best thing? thing? Yeah. DC5. It'll drag, it'll drag it up, yeah. like, yes. The prices have definitely gone up, because I paid nine, yeah. £9,000, I think, something like that, for my recent DC5, the really clean one I had. Um, and the other day, I looked, just for, for interest's sake. Um, oh, hang on. I know, I just cancelled that as well. Okay, cool. Um, so... For just for like for interest sake, um, I I I looked for DC five prices, and these things are going for like thirteen and a half grand for what I paid. You know, like I got a better one for nine grand. Do you know what I mean? Like when I look at them, yeah. and like I I don't think the DC five is justifiable for this. Whereas like when you say like there's an EK nine. And, but I would think the DC5, if the DC5 was that same condition as that EK9. So when they're a collector's car, because that, that EK9 with 3,000 miles on is not a driver's car by now. It's not getting driven. That's never no. getting driven. That's a, that is a museum piece or a collector's yeah. car piece. So that one, I can understand the price is going absolutely mental on because that is like a needle in a haystack, that yeah, car. Yeah. That, that don't exist. So, of course, you're going to get a successful human being that has an affection towards them that goes, do you know what? Fuck it. Because if you're a Bitcoin investor from back in the day, 68 yeah. grand is going to be nothing. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? If you're a, a successful YouTuber on all these big things, like let's say I, you know, like let's say I was in the position of Adam LZ, I'd be like, yeah, 68 grand on an EK9, get me a few views. I'm the it. same. I'd probably buy it as well. Do you know what I mean? I'd like, buy, so like, I'd, I'd be, buy I'd be guilty. I would, use like, it. I would buy it and use it if you had <laughs> yeah. that kind of money, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But how yeah. do you guys both see the prices going up? for what the cars we know we could have got them for back in the day do you see it as justifiable like uh, do, do, are you does it sit right with you like when you see it are you one of those guys that goes fuck yeah i'm glad these prices are going up i'm not yeah. glad they're going up you're not and you are on the other side okay let's start off with you then uh Teg boy let's go with you first because you're the one that has the opposing view so uh let's see let's see what you guys say this is it's not that i'm not saying i like it and I'm not saying I'm happy with it, but you have to, if you look at it as the market as a, the whole, every other market, the Porsche market, the Ford market, the classic car market, every car that has a significant interest from way back or is a, a car that was of its time, Escort Cosworths, Mark 1 Escorts, Mark 2 Escorts, early 911s, Anything like that, they're mm -hmm. big money, and they're big money for a reason. They're desirable. Mm -hmm. There's not many left in good condition. And people that, say, had them as teenagers, we're now, I mean, if it's the escort market, they're now into their 40s, 50s. Um, same with the Porsche market. There's a lot of people out there making a lot of money now who go, well, I had one as a kid. I want a mint one. Money's not too much of an issue. I'm going to buy one. Yep. So I, I kind of look at it like that. I'm... It is a tough one because you don't, no one wants to go and spend 30 grand on an old Civic. <laughs> but if you had 30 grand or if you had loads of money spare and you want to relive what you did as, like we did as teenagers, early 20s, mm -hmm. you'd go and do it. Yeah. Um, like, and there's, and there's far worse cars out there that are worth way more money. That's Definitely. the other thing. Is like, Definitely. I mean, I know you said you owned a Cozzy, but this might upset a lot of people, but I've, I've had the, honor of driving a lot of cars that come into work and even like escort cosworths uh, how they're going for the money they're going for to me i don't think it's worth it but then they're i'm not terrible in standard they're terrible yeah, standard. terrible terrible so you have to kind of look at it from both sides I, I and the other thing which i find really interesting is we so we see um i'll go back to the escort thing again we see a lot of fully restored original Mark 1s and Mark 2 Escorts come in that old boys have had forever and they just want to keep them original. And then the other side is like, I guess I see it from, is we have old boy, we have boys come in that have had Mark 2 Escorts for a long time. They've been modifying them for years 
and they've got no problems in continuing to modify them because it's been a modified car their whole life and that's the way I look, I look at my car. I've got one. I could have gone down two routes when I owned it, when I bought it. Should I have restored it and made it completely original? I think in hindsight, that might have been the right way to go had I known this was going to happen. But then on the other side, I've got an EK9 that I paid two and a half grand for for a rolling shell. And I've got no problem whatsoever in modifying it, putting a K20 in it, putting a K24 in it, welding a cage in, which it's got. Like, There's going to be people that are scared to buy cars and modify them because of their value. But then there's 100%. people like us that have they've had them a while that we actually don't have to worry about it. As long as you keep hold of them, you don't sell them. You, we, that's... That's the way I look at it. It's, it's, it's like a double-edged sword, isn't it? Which yeah. way do you go? And You've annoyingly covered quite a lot of stuff there that I was going to yeah. battle you with. <laughs> <laughs> so, Strang, now you go. But I think yours is going to be a very similar answer, just well, with a different initial question. I, I, isn't it? I do understand what James is saying. It's the same, it's the same thing. Um, the prices, I understand why they're going up. There's less them about. They're going up in value. And I get it. But... Because I'm into drifting and modifying the cars, now, uh, well, put it this way, my 86, I've got, so I've got an 86, which is a lovely road car, and I've got an 86, which is a, a track car, so I've got, like, both extremes. I've got the investment car, if you'd like to say, mm. and I've got the kind of track car. Now, the track car, when I bought it, wasn't that expensive, and now it's a 20, 25 grand car. So my, expen my cheap car that I'm throwing against walls or trying to drift with Adam with is now two or three times the price than I paid for it. So all the parts are now two and three times the price. If I smash yeah. it, it's, it's you know, mm. if, I, if I have a front ender in that car, it's like five or six, seven grand. Whereas before it was maybe... Yeah, but that's 50. your fault, mate. You sit on a yard yeah. full of car oh, parts that you're that. driving the prices up for. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's good. But, you know, it's good for us because you go, oh, yeah, that's great. We can sell and make a lot of money on them. But I would rather an 86 was like four or five grand. And I could mm. just drive it and not care. I, like I, I don't care that the car's worth a lot of money. That's just the cars that mm. I like. Yeah. Like it does. Yeah. I don't care. And I, I also I think it stops a lot of the younger generation getting into these cars now. Yeah. These cars are now investment cars, or they're not yeah. going to get driven. They're show cars. And I've watched a few sort of videos in Japan from like tuners such as Tech Arts, who are like a, a famous mm. A6 tuner, and they've yeah. said that all of their focus has changed from modifying cars to restoring them now they're oh, saying all the, yeah. all the owners are actually trying to put the cars back to standard and maybe having yeah. them like oem plus with like an exhaust and breather mods and stuff mm -hmm. because the cars are so valuable no one wants to you know no one's buying a, a mark IV supra now and putting a wide arch kit on it you'd have to be crazy yeah. and it's you know it's it's just a shame it stops people getting into the scene and i think it stops people from doing crazy builds uh, like you were saying with your civic if you bought an ek9 now you would never case swap it not a chance no no, just, you, you, just, you just you just kill all the value, but exactly, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a difficult one. It's I can see mm. both sides and I can see how it's yeah. good, but you know, well, for example, I, I've said to Adam a few times, I've thought about selling my uh, 86 road car because it's worth 30 35 grand now. I mean, you can yeah. buy a lot of cars for 30 35 grand, mm. you can buy a GTR, like let's, let's be straight up and on. You take out the sentimentality of us loving these old Japanese shit boxes <laughs> like yeah. let's take that out if you were look if you were a non-car guy and you just wanted a fast really fast car you could go out and pick up an r35 gtr for 30 35 grand now see no this is this is the the big the, the big issue though is an r35 gtr more fun to drive i don't know probably well, maybe no, not let... this is the thing so it depends. It depends. EK9s it depends. And the DC twos and the 86s. I mean, you'll be the same as me, Adam. You've driven a lot of new cars, and I'm sure James is the same. And the old cars are more fun to drive. I have not driven yeah. a single new car. They're much quicker. May maybe on an in maybe on an enthusiastic drive, the older yes, cars are not, way not more fun. Not as a daily. Fun. Not as a daily. I'm talking. Let's, let's even say road trip. Like, let's be honest. Like, if I had to drive up and see you, because you yeah. are. Ten and a half, ten hours away from me. Ten and a half hours away from me on a drive, James. You're two and a half hours away from me, and even that can be long, right? Them, eight, that, A4, that A14 yeah. is a dead road, man. Like, I mean, there is nothing on that on the way up to to seeing James and driving up Random. to Ustrang. I, I tend to go the longer route around Newcastle just so I can see the sea. Do you know what I mean? Because it's yeah. like, oh, look, that's, that's something to look at. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like well, I would honestly, instead of driving an old Corolla, I would honestly rather be in the in the in my m3 i over the my civic for instance because yeah. but my civic is 
I mean, I built that that car, basically built that car when they were still two grand. So I threw everything out. Mine hasn't even got heaters. Do you know what I mean? Like we ripped all that shit out and just threw it in a skip. If I'd have known how much money these parts would have been going for in America right now, that'd have gone in a container, in bubble wrap, and then in an airproof bag. That, I mean, like I probably threw away a good five to six thousand pounds worth of parts in value. I'm probably now. the same. I'm probably but, the same. Like, do you remember, Sorry. James? There's one thing that will always stand out in my mind on Civic Life. It was when that guy got the yellow interior in his EG. And he oh. threw it away in a skip because he was like, this is no. fucking gross. Who the fuck wants yeah. this shit? And he threw all of it, yeah. door cards a lot in a skip. That sells for three and a half to four thousand pounds yeah. now. And this well, guy just... Cars. No one wanted them, did they? they, they had, he had those oh, yellow yeah. floaty headrest seats. And even yeah, the yeah, yellow Recaros, yeah. you post it yeah. and be like, oh, that's gross. You're going to put good for its good seats in. And then all of a sudden, like just uh, on one day, everything went, oh, okay, everybody wants that now. And it's like, Wait, what? Yeah. Like we threw that stuff away. Like, I don't know. I think going back to what you said a bit, Strang, and this is something that I'm very, I think I above, not above you guys, but above the general consensus of it is like growing up, I, I didn't have a set group of friends until I got my driver's license. And until I met James and the street legal lot, I class like those guys as the first proper friends I made, you know, like outside of school where I didn't pretty yeah. fit in with anything. Cause I liked football, but I wasn't very good at it. So like, I wasn't one of the cool kids there. Do you know what I mean? Like, I liked skateboarding, but I wasn't very good at it. So no one really gave a shit. Do you know what I mean? It was only when I found car, like I, I knew I loved cars. I knew that's all I wanted to do. I had a car that I used to skid around a field. You know what I mean? Like that was what I did when I was a kid. Like I loved it. I think when I started to find my friends and then within them, like big car collectives, like the, the street legal and then going on to like epcivic.com and civic life. And then me and more guys that were like me, because I thought I was a bit weird. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was like, I just want an old Honda. I don't really give a shit about owning the latest and greatest Golf GTI or Scirocco or, yeah. you know, like anything like that. I didn't care about Volkswagens, which was the real popular niche scene at the time when I was, I was growing up. And then when I met everybody, I kind of felt like, oh, sound, I've met friends. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is cool. And like other people like Cy Bucknell, this is something that people don't get to experience anymore. Like, I, rem- I don't know if you'll remember this as well, James, but Cy Bucknell had a, a VTI EK, EK Civic. Yeah. So the clean. Silver. silver one. And he yeah. then sold it and bought an EJ9. And everyone, a silver EJ9. And he was like, oh, yeah, just trying to downsize a little bit. And over that weekend, he K-swapped it in his garage. And like, <laughs> e- like this is when K-swaps weren't a thing. Like, no one really did them. And he did He's it. Like, yeah. yeah, he did it. And then literally, he would post it like, oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot. I've been working on it a little bit this weekend. And just posted this engine in this car and like my head, like all the dots started connecting in my head. I was like, Oh shit, this is <laughs> fucking cool, man. I think I messaged him and I was like, mate, honestly, you've blown me away. This is like the sickest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like something that's every day now, it's an everyday occurrence now. An EK swap, you know, K swap yeah. EK. I can name three of them in Colchester. Do you know what I mean? That the kids did on their drive, but this was like before parts were available on the shelf. It was like, it was just himself. so cool. Yeah. And I met him at Jack Fest for the first time. And we've been friends ever since as well. And like, I've made some of my best friends through this stupid little obsession with cheap Japanese cars. And I then, I worry a little bit, but I said, I guess at the same time, it's not the same, but like, just because of like the differences in technology and stuff. But I think I discussed this with you a little while ago, Strang, that these kids coming up now that literally like they'll come to me and be like, Man, like I can't even consider one of these as a car because not that I just can't afford it, but I couldn't insure it either. Like they're just too expensive. Whereas, like when I was twenty-one, I was I'd had like three EGs by then. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And it was like, yeah, just fucking we throw them away after we're done with them because they're everywhere and, and they're most, shit. Most young kids don't want old Civics now anyway. Old, no. they want no. the Golf Rs and S threes and yeah, and anything you can fucking plug a computer in and get four hundred and fifty yeah. break from and with three hundred quid. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> hate to say it, it's a different generation, isn't it? Yeah. It was. But I do feel, yeah. though, there is a little bit of a saving grace, not so much with the real cars, but with stuff like Assetto Corsa and yeah. Forza and, you know, yeah. like the internet being a thing where these kids can kind of bond with people over their interests, but just virtually. And yeah. as they'll never get to experience that true pain of owning your dream car <laughs> when things aren't going right, when you lose a bolt, when you put something down and it disappears and you're like, I literally just put it right there. And that's such an important part. What have I done? Holy crap. You know, like that sort of thing. Or oh, you tighten up a bolt and it just snaps and you're like, yeah, the oh, 10 no. minute job, the 10 minute job turns into a 10 hour job. Yeah. And yeah. you're just like, you're underneath this bag of shit old car. And you're like, and I, I still have this now with my Sylvia because I got in that car 
just before the prices went absolutely you idiotic. You got like, at I, the right time. I paid nine grand for that. Like, although it has been an absolute arse ache and a very expensive arse ache at that, I still yeah. got the core product for what I believe it was worth. An SR20 yeah. swapped S15 with a cool body kit on it, real wheels, a real seat. Do you know what I mean, like everything was good in it. Like, you know, I, I think I paid a really, looking at the market now, a really good price. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, I got, I, all right, it owes me a, an Audi R8 now, but like, okay, I can't, I can't <laughs> really win. Do you know what I mean? Because like, I'd still choose my S15 over a R8 yeah. that owes the same sort of money. Do you know what I mean? Because it wouldn't be the one I'd want. So biggest, the biggest issue is how do you justify the worth? You know, how do you, you know, to some people, an 86 or an EK9 is worth 20 grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And it's a difficult one. It's, it's the, you know, you know, I, I think it's more, see, like the guys like us that grew up when the cars were cheap, we look at it and go, I'm not paying 15, 20 grand for one. But then you get people that go, I've always wanted an 86 or I've always wanted a, a Civic or whatever. And they go, oh, I, I can now afford it. I'm buying it. I've yeah, got yeah, 25 yeah. grand. I'm buying yeah. it. So to them, it is worth it. And, yeah. To me, I look at it and I go, an eighty-six isn't a twenty, thirty grand car to me. But yeah, you know, it's not it's not thirty grand worth of car as in like the experience of it. It's a one point six liter fucking yeah. solid back axle Corolla. <laughs> but <laughs> do you know what I mean? But I can see how to some people it is. And yeah. it's one of these things though, like imagine so imagine you've had all your cars taken off you. Would you buy one now? I would try and buy a Corolla. You would. Yeah. I would, I would try and buy well, one. Well, I, I did I, buy I an EG6. I think they're overpriced. I think they'd be too expensive, but I would want one. I would still I did, want one. I did yeah. buy an EG6. But I think me me, me, and both of you are very... We're in a different position to the people that are going to be paying the 20 and 30 grands because we're in the... We're in the we're properly root, rooted in the scene. So yeah. if you hear yeah. of a car that might be cheap, you kind of get first dibs on it. Yeah. Like me with that yellow EG6. You have a bit yeah. of a rapport with the owner already. So like they're going to listen to you. And like... You, you work a deal that you both think is fair. I got lucky with that car. Like I got, I, I say lucky, like I got lucky with that car with what I paid for it. But obviously yeah. the history then come about and it was like, oh, I kind of paid what I think it's probably worth. Do you know what I mean? Like, whereas, yeah. you know, like if, would I buy another EG6 now? I would, if I got it for a good deal, <laughs> you know, would I buy an EK9 now? Look, if there was an EK9 floating around for six, 7,000 pounds that I thought was a good spec and I was looking at that, I'd be like, yeah. maybe. Maybe I, I need to uh, maybe I need to ring EK9 Sainsbury's for that price. <laughs> the old loan out. <laughs> Let's get the old loan out. Well, that's kind of, kind of Sainsbury's. I need a little bit more money. Do you know what I mean? It'd be like look, this car is an investment. Like you know, and I I do I do understand why the prices have gone like this. People are paying hundreds of thousands of pounds for Pokemon cards. Like let's yeah. let's not act yeah, like no. we're the only people that are having our hobbies yeah. diminished with yeah. money. Like it's not the only thing. Yeah. And I think we live in we live in a world with the most like like billionaires ever, right? Like young billionaires as well, and millionaires. Like being, you, I mean, there's people making millions of dollars and pounds selling pictures on OnlyFans. Like yeah, there, yeah. there are if you are lucky enough to have the confidence and you know and the ability to sell yourself in that manner, there is money to be made. Um, yeah, I think my my biggest like. It's so hard to say because like I, I get I get a bit angry about it sometimes when I see like some clown trying to sell a rusty DC2 for seven and a half grand. I'm like, cut, you're just chancing me. Like that thing, that shell's fucked. Like what you're really buying is the running gear and an engine. Like because yeah. that shell is gonna need a full restoration. And yeah. will all body but shops even touch that shit? You know, because ru ru rust everywhere, like maybe they're gonna be like, yo, this is a big job, you know? Like, so then it, whereas I know it's a, it was a different time 10 years ago, but realistically, I mean, I, I mean, four years ago, I swapped Hondas all the time. I had a DC5, EK9, and an EG6, and a CX, a CRX, SIR, all within three months of each other. And I was like, yeah, I'll just get another one. And I think just because <laughs> I was so accustomed to that way of life, I could literally go and just like right now, like I get bored, obviously, like with my cars. You can obviously tell that. I love certain ones I keep forever. Like I love my M3. That was always my my realistic dream car was to get an E92 M3. Um, I love my EG6. As as wound up as I've got with it over time. Now it works, and I got to do that track day in it again. Me and that car just rebonded. We reconnected, and I was like, "Yo, it's so much fun chasing down the big power cars in this thing." Even though it's probably worth more than that now. Do you know what I mean that was the only difference really from like six years ago? Me being on track chasing an M3, and now me chasing an M3. Like back then, it was like, "Yeah, I'm in my two grand car chasing a, a fifteen grand car," and now I'm in my 
my twenty-five thousand pound Civic. Changing <laughs> your me. fifteen grand M3. Yeah, chasing the fifteen grand M3, going fucking hell, that thing's fast for a fifteen grand bag of shit. Do you know what I mean? Like that's the difference. Like that, that thing's fucking quick for something that's so cheap. Do you know what I mean? Like, like it, it's like fucking hell, he's fast in a straight line. Like obviously, my Civic isn't worth twenty-five thousand pound. That was just a, a random figure, but like in 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 all due respect, that Civic's price priceless to me now because. And I think this is another thing that's driven the prices up as certain ones have started to creep up as the collector's cars. People like us three have gone, can I replace mine if I ever did sell it? You know, like, so, no. so I'm just like, well, like I even yeah. said this to my parents, like, cause I was like talking to them about it. Cause when we had the Civic, like not finished, my dad was like, that thing is just taking up space. Like what, what is the point? You're not working on it. What's the point? And I was like, well, maybe I'll stick up for sale. And I think I put it up for breaking on Facebook just to see if anybody wanted it. And then I was like, I tried to look around. I was like, what if I want another one of these in a few years? And I was looking at the prices. I was like, I can't even find one. So I was like, yeah. I can't, I can't even find a good EG6. So then I've got to have to have another one all restored. And then I got yeah, to buy all yeah. the parts again. I was like, do you know what? I'm just going to write these cars off as dead money. So I've got my Nissan Silvia that does legitimately owe me like double what I put down as my house deposit. So that, that, that's how much that car owes me now. I've got my EG6 that owes me nowhere near that. But the, the way it's been put together to me, I've built that in the image of my dream JDM spec car. The only thing I'm yeah. really left to change on that going forward in the future is maybe a B18C swap <clears throat> just because I want it to stay B-series, I think. Like, uh, I, even though I'd have to pay more for a B-series now than I would a freaking K-series, which is the weirdest That's thing in the world. Money. What's that? Yeah, horrific money horrendous money and they're not worth like the, the power and stuff but that's it and the, the problem is the it noise. stays period correct to that yeah. car because yeah. we're in the type of thing now where i'm like oh do i just keep it b series? i think i am just going to keep it b16 if i'm completely honest because at the end of the day i'm at the kind of timer of it where I, it is almost a classic and i can be like well it's just kind of how they come from the factory and i can kind of play it off as that um and what, what, what where was i going with that uh so um Hang on, I've lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, changing it. I'd probably change the, the camber arms just to refresh those because they've been on there for like seven years now, like the front and rear hard race camber arms. Um, still a great product. I'm still happy with them. They still work. You set them up for me, James. You know, they were just a bit old by now. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah. the coilovers because the coilovers, it's still on my 621 ones that I had done and they are uh, twin tube, not monotube. Now the car's probably realistically never going to see the road again. I'm, I'm probably going to look to get either Olin's or KW or something down that more track focused line eventually. Not yet. I don't use it enough. We can't use it at all at the moment because of the Corona stuff, but that sure. when freedom does get granted to us again, and we can go and enjoy our things. Like I, I think that with that car being my dedicated track vehicle, I will look to upgrade it again and, and, it'll, and I will never sell that car. Now I had a guy the other day and I feel rude. I'm not going to mention his name, but he messaged me and he was like, um, would you sell your Civic? And I did reply. I said, it depends how deep your pockets are. Because if someone made me an offer, I cannot refuse. My my general thinking now is the only car I'd really want to replace that with is an R32 GTR because yeah, I would then turn that into my track car and I wouldn't treat it like a precious vehicle. It would be a like-for-like -like trade of I'm selling my Civic, I'm getting an R32 in, we're going to put a roll cage in it, we're going to you know, make it a race car. But I'm going to now have to pay. My friend had one back in the day and he couldn't sell it for seven grand. And that was a 400 and something break, freshly resprayed, all brand new bronze windows in it. Uh, no, this was a guy called Owen who works on my BMW and stuff for me. Um, he yeah. had it and he it was a white one and it was amazing. And he couldn't sell it for like seven or eight grand. No one wanted it back then. Now that same yeah. car would be an easy 30 to 35,000 pound. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, so I say, a what's that? Sorry. You ever see Yards is R32? Yeah. Oh, stunning. Stunning. And then Strang had a... He shouldn't have sold that. Yeah. It was, oh my God. Strang had stunning. an amazing one as well. Um, yeah, yeah. I, had a, I paid 13 and a half for mine. Yeah. It had a R34 GTR North Spec N1 engine in it, which was more, That's that's that, that was more than I paid for the car. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. That, that was that was the price of the car. The engine was more than I yeah. paid for the whole car. I, yeah. I sold it for 17 and a half. And then yeah. it's probably a 35, 40 grand car now. And it's my favorite yeah. car. It's the it's the one that got away. Yeah. And yeah. I'm I'm yeah. I'm now debating. This is I've I've spoke to Adam about this loads of times. I'm debating selling my eighty sixes to try and get one back again before they yeah. go up to 50, 60, 70 yeah. grand. I mean, who knows how high they're gonna go. Mm. Um, well, yeah. I mean it's it's all gonna be dictated by the Americans, by yeah. 
the 25 year rule well, is already driving 32s through the roof. I don't it's, think the 32s is going to peak as high as the other ones. I think the 32 is, the is kind of settling at its price now because they've been available for so long. And I think most of the enthusiasts in America have already copped those. So they're now looking for the cars yeah. like the EK nines and the, yes. you know, the, the stuff that they couldn't get like the S 15s. I know there's a bunch of Americans waiting. I, I honestly oh. believe there is going to be a bunch of S 15s already in them, that country that was snuck in that I just sat in a warehouse ready to go. They're already, they're already doing it, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Them up, getting ready for. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I, mean, think... I, I, I personally know if there's a, a few people I know that have uh, told me there's a few warehouses in Japan that have been just filled with S15s and yeah. uh, cards. Because all they do is you just buy them in the auctions and go, we'll just tuck them away until they're legal and then bang, double your money or triple yeah. your money. Yeah. 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 So I, I tell people when they message me saying, would you sell the car? That I do say, how deep your pockets? Because like I tell everybody, that I don't need to sell that car. Financially right now, I'm, I'm not doing amazing. I'm not like rich. Do you know what I mean? Like I couldn't go out tomorrow and buy an R32 GTR. But... I'm comfortable. I can pay my mortgage every month. I've got a little bit of money saved for my tattoo. Once we're allowed to finish that, I'm like, do you know what I mean? I'm like, I can buy games if I want. I can go for dinner. I like have a takeout for, you know, like money isn't like, I, at the minute I'm not struggling. So I tell them like, if you want to take my toy off me, I have to be able to replace that with the other toy that I want, which yeah. is an yeah. R32 GTR. So I need yeah. 25,000 pound for an R32 GTR right now. I reckon I could find one that I wouldn't mind ripping apart. Definitely. I I wouldn't mind one that's been in an accident because like to me, every car that's imported from Japan probably has had a bump and that's why it's ended up at the auctions. Like that's generally what goes through my head. Um, I think the only way you're really going to get a car that you can guarantee hasn't had a bump is to buy one from a dealership. You know, like I want a Japanese dealership where they're, they're still a Japanese car in the, the rot rotation of the Japanese car market. Um, Here's an interesting thing for you, Adam, as well, that I was thinking about. A lot of people don't realise the UK is, at the moment, probably the cheapest place in the world to buy any Japanese import. Yeah, it's crazy, the, right? The prices yeah. haven't crept on here yet, and people don't realise it. I reckon we've got another year, maybe two years here, that you can still buy stuff relatively yeah, really. cheap. I mean, mate, an R32 GTR, you'll get, you can get them here for 20, 25 grand. Yeah, try so and buy to, one. Try and buy one for that. I need to go yeah. viral. I need to go viral in the next few years and make a shit ton of yes. easy money. <laughs> <laughs> so I can get one of these architects. But that that that's generally what I say to people. And the boy offered me, he went, would eight grand change your mind? And I was like, <laughs> wait, I said, what are you trying to buy? The wheels? Like, I don't I don't get it. Yeah, I went, you can have the wheels for eight grand, like and the, maybe the brake kit if I'm feeling nice. I don't Jesus. I was like, no, like what am I gonna what could I go and buy for eight thousand pounds that would replace that? What, what can you buy? Nothing. I can't even go get an E46 M3 anymore for that sort of money because they've doubled in value as well. Uh, so like, you're crap yeah. anyway, mate. You don't yeah, you're not a fan of them, are you? <laughs> you had that, one, that, you don't like it. That was that was one of my dream cars. I used to play the E46 M3 CSL in Gran Turismo. Right. And then I finally I got one finally, and it was a heap of shit. <laughs> Looks you amazing. Sounds Looks amazing. Right. Yeah. And that's it. It's it's an average car in every respect, except from the engine and the gearbox is terrible. I mean, I've, I can't. That's a manual, can't that's a manual by the way, not an SMG before anyone goes, oh, I probably had an SMG. No, I can't comment. Gearbox. I've never driven one. Big long Shit. throw. Big long throw on the gearbox. Mega long. Christ, they wouldn't. Honda would laugh at them. <laughs> Honestly, though, people, people slag Hondas. Hondas make the best gearboxes. I've never driven a better gearbox than an S2000. I've never driven a better car. Well, on my um, NSX. Well, I've, never driven, I've never driven an NSX, to be fair. If you ever get to drive one, Oh my life. Well, your friend has a Type R, doesn't oh. he? Yes. Oh, and, no way. and he is no sat on a money. Way. He is sat on my, when he bought it. Am I understanding it was a five figure car when he bought it? Or did he pay six figures for yeah. it? It, it was a. Uh, no, it was. I could, yeah. It must I think have been it was, six figure. It must have been in the hundreds. It was a six figure car. It was, a six figure car. It was nowhere near the six there's, figures there. There's one for sale in double. Hong Kong. Have you seen the one for sale in Hong Kong at the minute for £895,000? It weren't a nearly a million pound car, that's for sure. And that's what yeah. all this went up for now. And well, they're, they're 250, aren't they? That's that's what I, I see them as a general going right out of Japan. Yeah. I mean I I drove I drove Mike's around Goodwood. And it I'm so it's still one, one, the, as, as car days go, there's the first drive in the EK9, the first track day in the EK9, and probably driving Mike's NSXR around Goodwood. It's, yeah. it's like I can't Words can't describe how amazing it is. Yeah. And it's, there's, like, his friend's got a R26R with some bits on, and arguably it's probably a quicker car 
to drive if you could drive well he he would dare drive the Renault on the limit because it's 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 not worth a huge amount of money. You could probably drive the NSXR faster if you was on the limit, but knowing how much they were worth. But just being able to drive it at like eight tenths, my God. There's no comparison um, in those two cars. I think no. that I think that car and Strang, you you have an uh, affinity with the, the guys, uh the Drift King. Yeah, Kichi Suchia, he's got one. He's got one. He a, a, he thinks yeah, yeah. it's the best car ever. Yep. And if that, if that man is there going well, you just like have you seen the video of him driving the new NSX with his the NSXR? Yeah. So good. And it's just like, uh, it's not it shouldn't have the NSX badge. It should not be yeah. called an yeah. NSX. And that I literally when I watched that and I, I heard him say it, I was like, that dude is just like us. <laughs> that's honestly yeah. what I've read. He's just like a dude that's grown up loving the real cars with no technology, and then all these new ones are coming, and he's like, Oh, you it's like with me when I saw that new type R, the first new type R that they brought back. I was like Yo, that ain't a Type R. What the fuck is that shit? Nah. As soon as I had a don't turbo on it. Badge for that shit. Put Type yeah. S badge on that shit. You know what I mean? Like, you put turbo on a Type R? No. Like, do you know what I mean? That's something you do if you're a lunatic that builds turbo Type Rs. Not, <laughs> not from Honda. Give me that high rev and NA shit. That's what Type R means. Like, that yeah. was the general the vibe. And, like, the fact that... I can't pronounce his name. Tash Tashia? Is that how you say Kichis, it? Kichi Tashia. Yeah, so he loves that car and that shows to me how good it is that that's his isn't his daily driver like is his nsxr he uses uh, probably it pr uh, maybe it used to be it's it used to be now. yeah, yeah, yeah. um the one of the, a really cool fact about suchia um obviously he's had his 86 for years and years and years he still drives that car all the time to keep his driving skills sharp for driving new cars because yeah. he says he says that it's such a hard car to drive that you need to focus all yeah. the time, and he says new yeah. cars don't do that, so he still drives that all the time to keep his skills sharp, which I thought was really cool. I watched one the other day; it was a more it was a new upload. I'll see if I can get it up on the screen here while um I'm I'm looking, but it was like an A86 battle that he posted, um, yeah. and he was like not getting aggy, but he was yeah. like coming back. He drive the other one. And then he come back to his tuner and he was like, this the front front dampening on this is better than mine. Why? <laughs> he was oh, like, I've seen that video. Yeah, and I've he was like, the, the front dampening is way better. Like, we, we need to change mine. I can't keep up with him with this front dampening. Yeah. But he still beats him, doesn't he, on the yeah. on the run yeah. because of the tyres because it was in the wet. But I was like, man, like, I, that that guy has my dream like life. <laughs> I look at that and I'm just like, well, you get to hit the toe gate every day in all these sick cars. like, And like, <laughs> you know, that sounds amazing. But <clears throat> I think... I think, like, oh, I do understand why the prices are going so high, but I think, obviously, I got into drifting quite late in terms of... I was quite late to the party with the drift, drift stuff. You were too busy messing about your Hondas. Yeah, and I think the problem is... I'll tell you why I think I was so late to the party. is because so many drifters and so many Honda guys are so in their own world and nothing else matters other than that. I, would, I wasn't willing to give it a go. I wasn't even willing to consider drifting as something that I wanted to give a go to until I actually spoke to somebody who was genuinely as passionate about drifting as I was about Hondas. And he wasn't a dick about it. And I'll give him a massive shout out. It was Mikey Mancuso who runs Jimmy up. <laughs> um, he I kind met of him at uh, Driftland. He's a nice yeah, guy. That was when I met him up at Driftland. Yeah. And we, we, we spoke for ages about it. And Is he that was when like, you got into drifting? Is that that day was the day my life changed. When I met you for the wow. first time. Don't And you're not taking credit for changing uh, my uh, life, uh, by the way. Uh, I met you on that day. Life, but it wasn't your fault. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so yeah, that day, I tell you what it was. It was that crazy Aussie dude that mounted uh, Phil Morrison oh, in yeah, the A86 was... when he went yeah, bang yeah. like that, and they carried on and they carried on the run. And I was like, was everyone amazing. was like, ah! and I was like, hang on, why is no one like going like, what the fuck? Like, if you're at a Honda track day and someone bumped your bumper, like shit would kick off, man. And I was like, yeah, you guys were just cool with this sort of shit. And, then, and I was like, that's allowed. I was like, is health and safety not here? Because obviously I'd only ever done like track days with like javelin and stuff. And I'd got told off for overtaking somebody. So I was like, you guys can literally crash into each other and people are cool with this shit. And everyone was like, yeah, dude, that's drifting. And I was after speaking to Mikey for so long, I was like, maybe I need to step out of my comfort zone. And I think that's what it was. Because like I said, growing up, I didn't have a real friendship group. I'd found my comfort zone. I'd found where people wanted to talk to me and wanted to hang out with me and like wanted to know what was going on in my little weird life. And yeah. I wanted to know what was going on in theirs. And I'd become so comfortable there. I didn't want to go back to the outside world where I had to face reality and face a bit of like, Oh, I'm not the top doggy in this. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I think when I got my drift car and I went to Santa pod 
for that first time and I sucked and I was like just desperate for advice and I met some cool people and they kind of showed me the ropes and then it allowed me just to go I know how to drive a front wheel drive car pretty well I think so let's try and just see how it goes with a rear wheel drive and it just that first drift day just clicked with me and I was like wow this is magical I can now do both things (laughs) do you know what I mean and I was like I want to going forward like because my civic has obviously been built being built for so fucking long like yours has james you know like you sometimes like lose the the momentum with it and you're like i don't really give a fuck do you know what i mean like but i bet you yeah i bet if i if i went to a track day near you james and i was like here's the keys to the civic go take it around for a few laps you'd come back and be like holy fuck i'm gonna go home and get mine done do you know what i mean you're (laughs) like i want to i want to be out with you in mine now and like and i think that's all it took for me was um what, what what kicked me on with the honda stuff trying to think did i go and did i drive a car around a track or something i know it was just like this whole like i need to get mine finished i i I, actually it might have even been me watching the hot the hot version videos on on it on uh youtube one night right you know like you have those binge sessions where you just sit and watch and watch and watch i was like i need to go finish my car i need to go and have this enjoyment again because i I, the problem is i'd gone so into the drift world i'd kind of given up the honda stuff for a bit and i was like, i don't really give a fuck i'm getting good at drifting now i want to get good at drifting and then it was like i've forgotten what i loved you know, and it's yeah. like let's let's kind of work a balance of this out and figure it out. And I think that like now I've got into the drift world. Sylvia's to me are the drift car. You know, there's the eighty six and stuff, which is dope, fucking cool. But like you say, they're hard as fuck to drive, and they are they were expensive when I got into drifting. Like they weren't expensive back in the day. Fun fact: a yeah. eighty six was the first car I ever did a donut in. First car I ever oh, did a donut oh, in was an a eighty six. It was oh, eleven <laughs> eleven hatch red with the black bottom UK car. That's and, uh, probably the coolest you've ever been, mate. That's the coolest. Probably, you've ever yeah, and it was it was very hungover as well. So I wasn't even feeling cool. I was just like See, making a load of dust. <laughs> I was like, this is yeah. sick. <laughs> getting back, getting back to the car prices side of thing. Um, the eighty six, as you were saying there, the eighty six was the cheap shit car you bought because you couldn't afford a Skyline or you right. couldn't afford <laughs> an S body. That's what they were. That was the cheap shit car that you bought because you couldn't afford yeah. one. And now it's the other way around. The eighty sixes are more expensive now, but I think that's because they were treated as disposable for so long that people just didn't give a fuck about them and yeah. there's no good ones left because everyone we just found many of them were rabbit as well yeah, in Ireland, yeah. Like, they were chucked into hedges for nothing weren't they exactly yeah, yeah. Uh, the the juice box guys um neil he was telling me he got into 86s it was through rallying yeah believe rallying. It or not. because cause obviously he's in ireland so the, <laughs> yeah. the, the rally scene's yeah. massive over there yeah so, it's, it's really interesting um, where people get got into them from, and some of them's from Initial D. For me, it's from Kichi Suchia and the hot version videos. That's that's where I've yeah. seen an 86. I've got the weirdest... I think my my affection for the 86, though, doing a donut in a field in Essex is the Brilliant. weirdest introduction to one. Do you know what I mean? It's like... Yeah, my, my friend Tom Crowther was just like... He was like... I was like, what the fuck is that old shit car you bought? Because uh, he bought it off a dead guy that lives down the back of my unit. That he car bought it lived... off a dead guy. Yeah, so like the dead guy's Brilliant. son, obviously. Like So like that car, if you go out of the unit and turn right, that was where it was kept. I walked past that car every time I went on a dog walk, every time I walk up to my friend Alex's. Like It was like... That car was just, just always was there. Shit. And it was just like, that's kind of cool looking. Like boxy old car. Like that's kind of cool. Didn't know nothing about them though. Do you know what I mean? Because I wasn't in the drift world and... And then he goes, um, I was, I was in the Honda world. Like I wasn't even in the Japanese car world, really. I was like in that, in that, you know, that little bubble yeah. of Hondas. And he literally, I can remember it. It was like, uh, I was like, what the fuck is this car? He went, it's rear wheel drive. Go do a skid. And I was like, I've never done one before. He went, like, you'll be fine. And I'm just going around feeling like, ah, blah, 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 you know, in this little car. And I was like, this is fucking hilarious. And there's actually a video of it on my channel of um if on my youtube channel if you go way way back if you just put like my first videos it's like i called it a, a jdm sunday or something that's just me in my dc5 pete in his dc2 rich in that crx that i also owned at one point and tom in his 86 putting some long champ wheels on it and cleaning the cars it's just a little music video sort of thing like back when youtube wasn't about vlogging it was just like a fun little music yeah. video but i look yeah. back at them days and i'm like do you know what at least i got to have them Hmm. you know yeah. like well, that's kind of the way i look at it while a lot of the cars yeah like yeah. at least we got to dick around with seven grand r32 gtrs and you know like yeah. even lance chilton like he was my first friend i made online like lance chilton from smoke hose um and back when we were younger he we become kind of close because everyone was doubting his project on the group and they were all being arseholes to him you know on the forum he was doing a b18 swapped ep2 that was what he was doing which was like the only one in the world that's actually kind of cool oh only one in the world has ever been done 
yeah, it was so cool. Like they, he spent a lot of money on that, and everyone was like, "Nah, it's never gonna happen. It's never gonna happen." And he, I messaged him privately, and I was like, "Dude, I know everyone's been a bit of a dick to you, but I fully am in on this. I think this is the coolest thing I've ever heard of." Like, so I cool. bought that engine. That was the BMW yeah, that yeah. I bought. Yeah, fully built, yeah. but I finished, had to sell it. Finish it. He finished it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. A, it's all on their smoke hose thing. Like, if you go on smoke That's hose, actually YouTube, quite cool. Oh, That's so actually cool. Cool. Well, he cool. ended up in a 700 odd brake horsepower R34 GTR. His, his 34 was amazing. Oh, back in the day, dude. I think he paid like yeah. 20 something thousand pounds for it and he couldn't sell it for 26. Like it was up for sale yeah. for 26 grand. This insane R34 GTR. And, like, and I can remember him having it up for sale. And I'd message him being like, bro, if I had 26 grand, dude, I'd have that car off you. And like, yeah. I look back now and that is a 120, 130,000 pound car yeah. now. And yeah, they're selling crazy. for that. It's and it's crazy. And it, I mean, in one sense of the word, I, I do think it's kind of cool. Like, I do look at it and I'm like, yo, I've got like all of this money sat in my garages. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm like, because they're never going to be sold. Like, so when I die, if I have kids, hopefully I have kids, like they can decide what the fuck to do with them. Do you know what I mean? Like if, if my kids in the future don't give a shit about dad's little red car in the garage that could be worth like 50,000 pound by then, if they want to fucking yeah. sell it and go on holiday fucking good i'm gonna probably write him a list and be like yo these volk wheels are the only set outside of fucking japan so do not sell these for fucking cheap if you do i will come back you i'll oh, find a way i'll come back and i'll get them back and like we're selling them for more like these spoon breaks <laughs> fucking <laughs> these spoon breaks if you sell these for sh- like cheap that sack of wing <laughs> do you know what i mean like my, that 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 civic has a real story to that build and i think that's why i could never replicate it you know what i mean and i think that's why i was so easy to sell the ek9 i had because most of the parts I transferred onto it were from my EG. And then when I sold yeah. it, I took all them parts off and put them back on the EG. And I was like, yeah. well, you know, I haven't got that, like, I haven't bonded with it. I feel like with car builds, the hours, I mean, you both work on your own cars, like the hours that you spend in the unit, for me, a lot of it's learning as well, because I'm not a mechanic. People don't realize the hours that goes into them is mm. unbelievable. It, it, they become your, not your friend, but they become part of your life. Like, like yeah. the other day, yeah. I, I just thought at like half three in the morning, it was like, I need to buy kinked arms for my Sylvia. I haven't got kinked the front arms for it. I and do stuff like that wheel. all the time. And I was like, fuck. And I wrote a note down on my phone, like, buy tomorrow S15 front arm. Do you know what I mean? Because I was like, to me, the yeah. S15 is another Civic. Like, it's one of these cars that I've had to learn so much. And I've had to output so much money to so many people that let me down. I'm like, I'm just going to fucking work the shit out myself now. And then hopefully by the end of it, I know how an SR20 all goes together. And I know how you take a gearbox out without even thinking about it out off of an, you know, an S body and the bolts you can leave out to speed that process up because you know, there's all stuff like that. You can learn not down yeah. the way. Um, and I think this is what a lot of the kids are going to miss out on because like you touched on earlier, James, the cars that they're growing up with looking at are golf R's and which are cool. Like let's not, I, I can't say that, that I don't think they're cool. Like the fact that you can go buy a four wheel drive, 300 brake car and plug it into a computer and have 450 brake in a, in a second. Like, they're, yeah. they're just like a new breed the of speed, car tuner. The speed of a Golf R remap is ridiculous. Yeah, is. absolutely yeah. insane. Yeah. For an out of the box car, I mean, so there's a there's yeah. a drag strip a drag strip in Scotland uh, up at Crail, uh-huh. right? Yeah. And um, all the guys I know used to stop going because it was pointless. Because you'd get a guy up there with a Golf R with a remap sitting there with launch control on, with speed <laughs> to the floor, and he would he would be. Yeah. I mean, you could go up there with your tuned Civic, and it would just leave you for dead. You could have yeah. your tuned yeah. Skyline, or you know, unless you've got a really serious car, that Golf R's beating you, and the guys got it on finance with a fucking five hundred pound Revo remap on yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, but I can't. I can't, can't blame them. It. I can't blame thing. the guys that want it either because yeah, yeah. a lot of them are just, they've kind of bought in the casuals to the tuning yes. side a bit more because a guy that maybe would have just bought an EP3 Type R and put yeah. an exhaust on it and ragged it around everywhere and put some dodgy suspension on it and have wheels with a rear rake and you know like and it's like oh god it looks shit that guy can now go and buy a cool car without having to touch yeah. it take it to yeah. a tuner that plugs it in chucks a new yeah. map on it and away they go and the, i think that's the difference like to be a car guy now you don't have to be a bit tapped in their head because i think you did have to be a bit tapped in there yeah i had to have your priorities in the wrong order do you know what i mean like yeah. i would i would my, i would much i wouldn't have rolled around on replica wheels after i was 19 Like i wouldn't i just wouldn't have done yeah. like like at, at 19 to 27 i think i was so image conscious with my cars but like, I, I was like my car has to have genuine wheels. I was like, well, I can't afford them yet. So what can I not do over the next three months that will mean I'll have enough well, money to go and buy a set of Rega Masters? Do you know what I mean? And, you know, and like... See, the issue with me is not like that they're cheap or whatever. I'm the same. You know me, Adam. I'll, I'm like, 
Mr. JDM. I like yeah, having yeah. all like real parts and stuff. It's the fact if you buy a replica part, you're taking someone's hard work and designing that part and basically yeah. slapping them in the face. Mm. You know, that that's why I, I'm not a big fan of it. I just I, I put it this way, if I designed like a wheel and I found that wrote I've just copied it and I'm making it, it would piss I'm gonna me off. stick up for Rotor a little bit because nah. I am because Rotor have saved Enki more than once. Um, to the point where they even produced certain Enki wheels for Enki. So their whole J line, right. yeah, their whole J line of Enki wheels was all made by Rotor. Um, yeah. So, well, the, the, well, well no, but, but that's different. That's different because it's Enki's license and their design. So that's yeah. fine. They've yeah, when got, they were when they were about to go out of business, yeah, they've, they've, Rotor they've, stepped they've in and got, saved them. So like, I, they, they, yeah. I understand. I think Rotor are the best of a bad bunch. Like, I don't even think Rotor are bad. I, I would. They're actually good quality like, wheels, they're, but they're for decent. what they are, but they're decent, I just don't like the the idea of it that they just stole other people's designs. I mean, just... don't get me wrong, dude. I Sorry. I drift on work wheels. I have my Civic on on Ray's T thirty sevens, like yeah. my M three. I refuse to put wheels on it until I find the ones I actually want. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I am, but I think that's just the way I am in in the car world. Like for me. A lot of people would just be like, I'm just going to buy some Apex wheels and just fucking dump the M3 on the Apex wheels. Yeah, and, and I'm like, well, LMs. I was like, well, I can't. I, I can't. I got to, I've got to save up for the Volks or the uh, E88 BBSs or, you know, it's like I have to have yeah. it as a set way or I don't want it at all. It's like, it's like well, mm -hmm. I can't be mediocre in cars, but I can be mediocre in other aspects of my life. For instance, I'd happily wear a Primark t-shirt. I live in my own clothing or sportswear. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't. I, I would go out up out town clubbing in fucking shoes that I've had for eight years because I don't care. I mean, most Whereas, of my clothes are car stuff. I mean, I've yeah. got an S chassis fest t shirt yeah, on right now. On right now. <laughs> so, so, like, to me, like, whereas one boy probably would have to hit the gym for 10 weeks and steroid himself up and look ripped as fuck to be able to go into town, I have to make sure my car is steroided up on the fucking good Yeah, that's me. The, <laughs> my the, car's the good looking bit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I get out and I look like this shit. I'm like, yo, what's up? <laughs> you right? <laughs> got bald head and a fucking podgy belly, but I've got a sick set of wheels. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, that's just kind of how, like, I guess I am. And I guess a lot of us are. You know, how often would we have gone to car shows in DC shoes and train, you know, like jeans from fucking River Island that are ripped like down the middle where you fucking bent down too much because they were 12 quid and you're like well they're fucking jeans isn't it I don't give a fuck like <laughs> but rock up on, on a, in a car that costs you two grand on a set of wheels that's worth double that do you know what I mean <laughs> it's like yeah yeah mate you know I've got this fucking oil cap I've got a no good racing oil cap that I got from Kazoo uh, when I was in Japan and I don't even know how much money I could ask for that now I wouldn't sell it it was a gift I would never sell a gift do you know what I mean like when uh, when something is gifted to me, it doesn't get sold. It just goes on the shelf. It could be worth two grand, mate. But I'd be like, I wasn't giving it to sell. It's got memories attached to it as it well, is a, which is a, priceless, a so. gift from a friend shown out of care and love and thankfulness for your friendship. I'm not going to be like, got this now, I'm going to sell it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've, you know, I've yeah. learned that lesson in the past where I've, I almost did that with something else. And, you know, the guy was a little bit like, dude, I kind of gave you that as a thing not from yeah. the japanese stuff that was a uk thing and I, it was only a little thing but i still felt bad i was like oh fuck like do you know what i mean like but i just had no connection with the brand that it was so i was just like well fuck it it's only a five or whatever like it still felt i was like oh, okay like i shouldn't do that okay i get it like so yeah i, I realized I, we've not really been talking about car prices much no but it's, this is a podcast <laughs> dude like we have been is talking about right? it though is yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. This is perfect because it's it's is it, it we have been talking about the car prices and I kind of like keep going off on divergence. So what I was actually talking about when I said got into drifting, like to me, Nissan Silvias were one to three thousand pound cars. But that's what they were. Like a five grand Silvia was a good one. You know, like an S14. Yeah. Like my friend Robsy paid two thousand pound for like a four hundred brake green UK S14. It's lowered yeah. on the rotor GTRs and it was sick fast and sick and it was like yo this thing's fucking nuts like cool it's a three grand car <laughs> you know what i mean like now that same car would be twelve thousand pound with it yeah. with it looking shit and it's like well well the gearbox me, is used to be 50 quid it was 50 pounds for a, a, a sr gearbox was it you yeah. were trying to sell me one for 300 you fucking dickhead oh yeah aye. and then you never even took it you cunt <laughs> no you're right i didn't because oh, i found another one want, way closer want, i only fitted it for 300 yeah see honestly man Dan Joyce, shout out, mate. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he even come and fucking fitted it. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, like for me, the big the big, I guess, concern is obviously I like drifting my Sylvia, 
And I always kind of had it in my head, like, oh, I'll just get another shell for like two grand, three grand yep. for an S, S, an S, S, whatever. Because the, the Sylvia's are brilliant because you can just swap all the parts straight in. It doesn't matter which one realistic you get. They all pretty much swap over. And now I look at them and I'm like, well, mm. if I crash the Sylvia, I guess I'm going to be putting an SR20 in an E36. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because like, like fuck, can I, have, I can't, I don't think I could physically bring myself to buy another one because that Sylvia is special to me because of the bond I've built with it. You know, that, that car would probably be a car that has to go off to a special shop to get fixed if I write it off. And then... See, this, is, this is where it might move into where I go back to the Ford thing and the Porsche thing, but you can build a Mark II Escort from panels. Right. That whole car. Or you can buy... There's a company in China making Mark II Escort shells. Really? So you can buy a brand... Yeah, yeah, you can buy brand new shells for a Mark II Escort or all the panels separately. If you, you want to build a Porsche, a classic Porsche, you can build a classic Porsche from out of all the panels. You buy them I've all seen separate. them. Is that the Heritage yeah. Shells or whatever they call them? Is it Heritage Shells? So, yeah, something like that. But, I mean, if it goes that route, then it kind of makes, I think, stuff that we do, a bit, not a bit more accessible, but you won't, we won't have that fear of you do a front corner on an S15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If someone starts producing the parts, the wings, the front clips, the everything, you can then go, okay, it's not the end of the world. I've crashed it, but I can reboil the parts. Yeah, yeah exactly. So this, this is, on that route. Yeah, well, this is this has just started happening for the 86s. Um, there's a company over in Japan that started producing like rear quarters and front yeah, and yeah. front front arches and stuff, but they're actually yeah. like metal. So that yeah. makes a big difference because that was one of the things that kind of scared me about my car. If you hit a rear quarter, you can't get yeah. one. You have to put exactly. a fiberglass arch on it and yeah. it's not really my thing. Yeah. So I think that's the way it'll go. Well, I, I, it'll... I didn't even think of that. I didn't really, I knew that some companies were making the old Escorts again and I, I pray that they do because <clears throat> for me, these cars are not, <sighs> the, the problem I've got is these cars, I, I fell in love with these cars because I saw them being driven hard. Like, yes. I, I obviously I went to the car meets and stuff and that's where we kind of all spoke about the cars. But then it was like, I just liked watching them being batted around and going, you know, around the back lanes. And even if it was like the, my favorite bits of like going to a car show was like the drive there when we're all like Same. when we went to Jackfest, take boy and I stayed yeah. at yours yeah. and we we're all just honking it through the lanes and all the cars. And it was just like, man, this is ma this is the magic bit. Like the, the car show is just kind of where you go and buy, a, a, you know, yeah. I bought an yeah. intake yeah. and, you know, stuff like yeah. that. You go and buy some stuff and like, see some other cars and go, oh, I'm going to do that to mine now. Or like, oh, I like that idea. Or, oh, I don't like what that guy's done at that. That looks fucking shit. I'm glad I didn't do that. Do you know what I mean? Like, the, yeah. the show wasn't the bit that I looked forward to. It was like the, the drives and the, you know, the cruises yeah. to places and that never were cruises. They were always races. You know what I mean? And it was like, it was like the second you joined the M25 when the original Mims were on. Fuck me. Oh, my God. <laughs> Everyone was just... It was like a UK canjo almost when you go into Mims. Like, people didn't give a fuck. And it was hilarious. Yeah. And like, that, I didn't even care. Like literally going to Mims wasn't about the event. It was, you'd go to Mims for the drive bit, all race yeah. up with all the Hondas, get a KFC, have a chat with some people. I'd get some photos for the blog and then we'd come home. Do you know what I mean? Race that home. was, yeah, race home. And like, I remember one night in the pissing rain, I was in the DC5 thing and uh, Pete and Tom Crowther, they both had DC2s at the time. I just see these lights coming up behind me. And they went past me and they must have been that far apart. Like, ah! you know, and I was like, yes, boy, let's go. You know, and that was like the magic of it. And I do, do you know, what? I don't, I do, I do. And I don't worry that people are going to miss out on it because at the same time, like, it, like, like you guys were saying, well, especially James saying about the old Fords, like we didn't really get to experience the old Fords that much. Do you know what I mean? Like no. for, for me, I was on the arse end of it with South End. So you'd go down there and the Cozies would be doing like the burnouts down the seafront. And that yeah. was, to me, the extent of the Fords. I was like, they're just the Asbo yeah. cars. Like, yes, the Sierra Cozies and the Escort Cozies were just, oh, that guy's probably named Gary and he loves to do a burnout. Do you know what I mean? Like, that was kind of what that was. Like, like that was genuinely what it was. It wasn't like, they were just yeah. like the, the staple of Essex, you know? It was like, yeah, that's they're the cars that were built here. We love them because of that. And they're all mental. And every guy that owned a Cosworth back in the day would just come into car parks, do a shit ton of donuts and then fuck off. That was what they did. Yeah. Like we'd just be standing down there did, yeah. and you'd have a Sierra five door Cosworth coming in. An escort, uh, not a fucking Escort, sorry. The um, Sierra Cosworth five door one coming in. It'd have a rear rake like that. The yeah, arse would be borderline touching the floor. The sapphire, sapphire yeah. yeah. And he'd come in and he'd just be like, whop, 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 and just doing a donut like this. And then he'd donut and skid out of the car park and that'd be him for the day. And you'd be and like, the engine would blow up. 
I, I, yeah. I wouldn't care. I'd be like, well, fucking, that was annoying. It's got rubber all over my car. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Milton Keynes cruise on a Sunday night. There was always a guy in a burgundy sapphire. Every yeah, always week. a burgundy one. <laughs> there was always a burgundy one. <laughs> With like BAZ 9973 on the number plate or something. It'd always be Baz or Gaz or something. And I loved yeah. it. Like, And I, I, I saw, uh, I'll tell you what though, maybe like, maybe even though these prices are going crazy, maybe it brings the affection I have for them up that little bit more, seeing the people that yeah. are like us that had them back in the day that still have them. The other day yeah. in Colchester, I was driving back to the office and uh, I, as I was coming the other way, I saw a Series 1 RS, no, was it Series 2 Escort RS Turbo? And it was white and it was proper. You know, like it looked the like a special. Nice yeah. yeah. And I literally, I looked at it. I, I saw this guy and I was like, I have to get this guy's attention. I was like, yo, yo, that's fucking <laughs> sick, dude. And he was like, oh, cheers. And then he messaged me on YouTube going, I'm pretty sure I saw you earlier. And I was like, mate, yeah. your car made my day. Just seeing that car out made me feel happy. I was, it made my day. I was like, that was so sick. I, I remember driving home and I was like, I was so stoked. I got to see an Escort like Turbo on the road today. It was so yeah. cool. Like, I've had that quite a few times in the 86. I'm sure I said to you, Adam, that time, like if you pull up in a petrol station, oh, you, yeah, always yeah. Get people, you always get people coming up and going, oh my God, is that an 86? I'm like, yeah, man. He's like, oh, I love Initial D. I was like, yeah. oh, I was like, oh. I was like, I was like oh, go and have a look, man. And he's like, oh, I've never seen one of these before. And I love that because I remember yeah. when I was a little guy, and yeah. I would like see a cool car and I'd be like, oh, I wish the owner was sound and I could go and speak to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing, and I'm still like that now. If I see, same as you said with the RS Turbo, if I see like a cool car, I'm like, oh fuck, that's sick. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you don't see it anymore, do you? No, I mean, no. well, I'm I'm kind of lucky that I see a lot of it. I see a lot of old. Just for your job. Classic. Yeah, because I mean, it's a it's a perk, and I guess it kind of desensitizes me to the cars I see. But when we when we get the old boys coming in that have had these cars for a long time, or they've had an old Escort or an old Porsche, and they're in their fifties, just think. That's me. Like yeah. he's had that yeah. thirty years. That's me. I hope in another twenty years I've still got my car and we can still. It's like you not give back, but you 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 keeping the these kind so, of cars a lot. This is exactly yeah. what I said to Strang the other day. I feel yeah. I even said this to Lewis Noakes. I talked to Lewis about this a lot because my friend Lewis Noakes also has a A86 and a, he probably tells yeah. you fuck off. No, no, no. <laughs> he's, he's he's very similar to us. I, I, I think with all this, like he's like. You know, because he paid not very much for his 86. He's got a cappuccino that he's building. He's got, like, you know, like, a, a fucking cool selection of cars. He's got that, some cool cars. Yeah, that, that boy knows how to build a fucking car out of anything. Like, he's putting a Saab engine in an S13 at the minute. Like, I love that about him. Like, he's just like, fuck it. I don't, I'm going to do it. I don't give a shit. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't give a fuck what everybody else tells me what to do. I'm doing it what I want. But um, I was maybe saying this to him. I can't remember which one of you guys I was talking about it to. But I was like, I feel like I've almost got, not a responsibility, but a responsibility to myself to keep my Civic as a track car, keep it stripped yeah. out and uncomfortable yeah. and showing air, like people what it was like before an iPhone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, this was how we had our fun. Like we'd go down my garage and we'd rip the heaters out because we thought it was saving loads of weight. <laughs> you know, we took... Yeah. In reality, it's just making it shit. <laughs> yeah, it just made it horrible and unbearable to the point where I'm like, I'm not driving this fucking thing anywhere other than a track. <laughs> like, oh, bring your Civic yeah. to a meet. All right, is there anywhere I can leave my trailer? Because I'm not driving it. Like, it's like, it's horrible. But... um. Yeah. I feel like I've got all like like you know like like you guys have uh, hopefully agree like not a responsibility but also one I like just to be like like yo you can still come and witness a VTI Civic being absolutely driven it's fucking nuts yeah. off like on a track uh, you know my yeah. Sylvia you can still come and watch a borderline twenty five thousand pound car now being thrown against a thirty thousand pound A eighty six if you want like yeah. you know and yeah. it's like that sort of like responsibility of like I could just go and realistically like build my e36 to be a pretty good drift car but it will never have that same just an e36 magic appeal to yeah. me that my sylvia does yeah. like the pay the, the, the I, i'm very excited to drive my sylvia without a misfire i still haven't <laughs> i've had it three years and it's had a misfire since the day i picked it up really like so it's like i that mad that day is going to be as magic for me as it would be anybody else picking Mate, up their I'll new excited. car i'll be excited for you <laughs> it'll be the first time i've done a drift in a nissan sylvia that is mine because obviously i drove dan joyce's one briefly um that i won't have a problem hopefully so we can actually find out if i can drive or not because i've been blaming it on the car for the last three years i won't have an excuse no <laughs> i won't have an excuse afterwards. no more excuses yeah i'll be like why did you crash because i just fucking suck dude <laughs> i don't have to misfire or blame it on anymore i just fucking suck <laughs> so uh so yeah it's gonna be um interesting going forward and going forward 
which cars do you think are going to be the next ones to flip reverse? Uno reverse card themselves into the stratosphere. S2000. Yeah, I think they're already I, I on the just, way up. I was literally just about to yeah. say S2000s. Nothing's came out that's replaced an S2000, really. They like, can't. What have you got? An MX5. They can't yeah, replace they, the S2000. They, un- they unfortunately they were, made, in my opinion, the perfect roadster. They were 10 years too early as well. Mm. Yeah. So but ahead of its they, time. It's, um, they're, yeah. they're an amazing yeah. car. Like They are an amazing car. And anyone that doesn't like them, I just don't feel like they know how to drive. Like, 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 like you, just, yeah. you don't know how to drive a fast Honda if you can't. My only criticism of the S2000, you know, I had one was they are very snappy. And that's coming from someone that can drift. They're a snappy yeah. car. Yeah, but they're not a drift car. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> that's not, the thing. No, no, they're not a drift car. But it's that, easily sortable. Though. It's easily see, sortable. I've heard this. That, so this man up I, here puts them together. Like if the screen is recording, that like he built the one that I did a video on. That I have no idea why uh, that video didn't do better see, because I thought that was one of the best videos I've put on the channel. Yeah, I've got I've got <laughs> um, unfinished business with the S two thousand. So I had an AP one and I really liked it. I thought the gearbox is amazing. I thought it looked yeah. amazing. Just I loved everything yeah. about the car except from the handle and at ten tenths. See, like eight tenths and nine tenths, it was fine, but at ten tenths, I was never comfortable in the car, and I always yeah. wondered, was there something maybe not right with the car? Did it need the setup changed or something? So I've got unfinished yeah. business with it. So it'd be interesting to hear if you're saying you can fix it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even the later cars, they they made improvements to soften the back end up a bit, so the later cars are better. Mine was um, a '99 yeah. AP1, so mine was like as early yeah. as they came, basically. Exactly. Yeah. You always had the big rear roll bar and the stiff rear springs, and the but you can. Yeah. Even the later cars, they improved on, but all aftermarket stuff improves them massively. So mm. I, I, I mean, would definitely just... have another one, I think, to try and yeah. make sure it was right because uh, yeah. everything about them appeals to me so much. Oh, yeah, they're I so think, good. I they're think they're so, so good as well. And it's very rare incredible. that everyone... It, I mean, they I know there's a few people that won't agree. Everyone has their own opinion yeah. on it, but I think the SC 1000 is fantastic. Um, another one uh, that I think... You might not agree on this because at the minute they're they're like the more modern day EP3, but the Toyota GT86, I think yeah. they're going to be the next car to come crashing down in value that all the drifters will pick up, the track day enthusiasts yeah. will pick up because they're going to the, as they get cheaper, there's going to be way more modification options for them engine wise. Have you driven one? I have, yeah, and I felt oh, like no. it's quite amazing. Oh, the handling of it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah just the engine is pants. Pants, absolute well, turn. <laughs> Like, Such a letdown. Letdown. but Such start. A but when you when you start thinking like, all right, what's a accessible engine for tuners? The K series Honda engines, like they're yep. brilliant. That you can turbo them. What K out, haven't they? What for the eighty six? Yep. Oh, sorry. Yep. Series decided to start talking to me. So now they've, I was going to say, if they bring out a kit to do that, I think that would be the swap yeah, that everybody yeah. does. A K swap uh, GT eighty six would yeah. be amazing. Amazing, and I think a turbo K swap one would be the the perfect drift car, you know, with the right yeah. geo kit on it and stuff. And I think they will be the cars because if you look at EP threes, they're going up in money as well now, and they have literally been the like the dog of the Honda scene they've, for so they've long. Been, they've been far too cheap for far too long. I've always thought. I mean, yeah. you could pick one up and then sell the engine for more than you pay for the car. How, yeah. how, how often does that happen in history? Like you can buy a car, rip the engine out and then sell the engine for more than you paid for the whole thing. Like that's yeah. bizarre. Obviously that's going to yeah. be a very rare occurrence going forward. But um, I feel like the GT86 will be a car that goes up in value, but that would be a car that I'd be well, interested in buying to then turn into a drift car see, when they hit the bottom limit. The drift car at the moment, the next upcoming drift car is 350Z. Definitely. They are yeah. bought, They are so cheap now for an early one. Yeah. They like, should so stay cheap because they suck. Yeah. Well, you see this, but every single person I spoke to says they're amazing to drift. Well, not everyone, because I fucking think they suck. Yeah, I mean, no, as no, a drift no, car, no, no, they're no. fine. But you couldn't but, drive a real yeah. drive car when you had yours. That's, that's true, but I can drive one now, and I still exactly. think they suck. Exactly. But, <laughs> be fair, standard, uh, like, oh, shit. I would only buy one to crash it at Santa Pod. Like, that would be my replacement for an E36. I wouldn't buy a 350Z and be I like, think it's way I'm going to make that, that as fucking... Buy one instead of your E36, much cooler. Well, why would much I do that cooler. when the E36 is brilliant and you can buy arms for them for seven pounds off Euro car parts? Like, uh, that's what you want from a shit drift car. You want it to be like, oh, I've crashed it. I'm just going to repair it for 13 quid. Cool. Mm, <laughs> that was my issue with E36. I couldn't, uh, even drifting it, I never enjoyed it because I just hated the car. Yeah, but that, the that's good though. They're actually, didn't... they're actually a good car though. Yeah, but the problem they're... is you're too, you're too, you're too used to like comfort. And you, you're GTA. you're in a you're in a long relationship, a long happy relationship. Like you don't understand what it's like to get with a girl that you just hate, and you're just like, well, you're just gonna do it until I get a good one. Like, and that's Smash what an E36 is. In. Yeah, just you're there for the shagging, and that's it. Like that's what V36s are for me. Like I like them. Don't get me wrong. I I I am an E36 fan. I like them. I've had a bunch of them. I like the 328. I look. I've at had M3s. a few of them. 
I nearly drove cool. a three to eight turn. I did like it, but I just yeah. as a as a drift car, I don't like them. See, I, I do like them as a drift car because I take I I no longer have that fear of if I crash this, a replacement set of headlights is twelve hundred pound. I yeah. I get to go if I crash this, it's going to cost me thirty eight pence to fix and maybe a Fredo. Care. You know, like that's uh that's what it's like for me personally, but. I just, I don't know, like, I just don't, I never got on with the 350Z, and I think I'm always going to have, unless I got one now, because I almost bought another one. I did almost buy another one. I remember one. You, you were talking to me about it. Yeah, and it was going to be a drift car. That's all it yeah. was going to be, but the gearbox was fucked on it, and the guy was trying to sell me it with a fucked gearbox, and I worked it out. I was like, I, I just, and we won't go into it, but I was just like, yeah, I'm going to leave this, because I don't want to end up having another project car. The whole point of it was to be a car that I could just chuck some Jump coilovers in. on and go skidding. That was what it was going to be. Um, but yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a big fan of them, but I can appreciate a good one, which I think yeah. they're very few and far between, but I can appreciate a good yeah. one. Uh, I'm trying to think what other cars are potentially like I would buy at the moment if I had money. Do you know, to be honest, I would probably buy a DC Tour and EK9. Uh, if I could tuck yeah. a couple of those away Genuinely. right now, because they're only going to go up in money. I, 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 I think at 15 grand an EK9 at the moment is still cheap. I, unfortunately, it is. It is. Like, that's it is, a good one. That's a tenth it, offer for a good one. Like yeah, a, yeah. Yeah, that's, one that doesn't rot them. I mean, right Harv's, Harv's got an that amazing was the first one type R. First yeah. Civic Type R. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. No, that was the Type R. NSX was the first. Definitely. Yeah. I'm yeah. checking this. I'm yeah. Googling yeah. this shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. NSX R was the first Type R Honda, and then it came yeah. with the EK9 as the first. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. they had the SIR with the R as a red thing in, in Japan on the CRX and that, but it was never a Type R. It was always the... Ah, uh, you're correct. You're yeah, correct. I know you're we are. NSX. You, <laughs> I know you, we are. You are the Honda, you are the Honda guys, to be fair. We're, we're, yeah, we are. <laughs> um, so it was the first, it was the first affordable Type R, basically. Yeah, it was, it was the, the first, yeah. The first Massive people's was, Type R. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a limited number. You could go and put an order down and buy one. So yeah, it was the first. The engines were hand-built, weren't they, on them or something? I'm sure the, I the part, Yeah, the early... They were well. They were like they were ported and the stuff and polished, weren't they? Right hand, yeah, yeah, yeah in the early. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool yeah. for the type of car it is. I think that's really cool. Oh yeah. I mean, you got to think the the engineering that went into like EK 9s DC twos. No, no one builds cars like that anymore. Oh, it's double Not wishbone. Even twice. Sorry. Double wishbone, double wishbone suspension, front and back. You don't even get yeah. that in like basically anything now. Yeah, I mean, Porsche have only just started putting double wishbone on the new GT three. Wow. Only just started doing it. It's making me so DC. angry that I sold mine. I, oh, <laughs> God. I sold it for five and a half grand as well, for fuck's sake. Like back then, I felt that was a fair price. We're not even talking long ago. We're talking like, when did I sell it? Four years ago? Four years ago. It wasn't yeah. that long ago because you were friends with me on Facebook. I had Finn. I, I, the first car I had Finn in was an EK9. I put him in the back of my EK9. Like, that was that was the car I rolled around in, dude. And I, that, that car was... didn't even owe me that much money. That owed me what? almost. I'm not gonna say online, but it didn't <laughs> owe me that much money. And like, I look back now, and I'm like, man, like I I, I needed it at the time. It, it served yeah. purpose. Like I said in that that video I posted on YouTube, yeah. that car I sold to cover a bill for a house I was buying that I didn't know. I didn't know stamp duty was a thing. And then my yeah, solicitor yeah. said, oh, you owe us this amount of money, and I was like what have I got that I can sell that's worth that amount of money that I know I can sell in like a day at EK9. Yeah. It had to go. Like I, I was planning on keeping the EK9 and selling the DC5, but I knew yeah. at the time the EK9 would sell so much faster than the DC5. Yeah. So that was why I was just like, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to bite the bullet, sell it now and get another one in a few years. <laughs> I didn't realize they were going to quadruple in value. Like, <laughs> and now like I, I'll be, on, I'll be straight up and honest. I, I keep saying like, I'd never pay this sort of money one of these cars i think that if i had success like in business and in life and yeah. youtube yeah. You and would. i think you i would. would i think i think i yeah. would I'd, I'd probably try and buy halves so. yeah that's the thing it's it's supply and demand everything it's all relative comes supply and demand. yeah it's all yeah if you yeah. can afford it and there is only three of them that come up for sale in a year and you can afford to buy one of them yeah. you would buy it because that's yeah. that's what that's why the prices are stupid because there's not many about anymore. Mm. I think this, the thing that makes me a little bit sad about it, though, is that if I did buy an EK9 now, I'd want one as nice as Harv's. Um, for anybody that doesn't yeah. know who Harv is, my friend Harv and I picked up an EK9 from Aberdeen, fucking God knows, five years ago. And he paid yeah. top money for it back then. I literally said, you are fucking mental paying this amount yeah. of money for an EK9. I remember him telling me how much. I was like, he was like, yeah, but it's really clean. I was like, 
Yeah, but that about clean? I don't know, dude. Well, well he's going to easily triple his money now when he goes to sell it. Well, so, yeah, he yeah. has got a very, very low mileage, very, very clean pre facelift EK9 with the, the mods it does have on it are all very good and easily yeah. replaceable. And he has all the original parts still. Uh, that would be the car that I'd just message him and be like, how much do you need? How much do I yeah. need to transfer? What color is it? Is it champ white? Champ white with yeah. the red Recaros. It's perfect. And I think Jamie, that's the only color I'd have a type R in, but I'm, I think I that's the only color I'd have. I, I think James is red now, but it was white. But you changed the color like seven years ago, wasn't it? Like when they was yeah. it six, seven years I, ago? Like, yeah. like before yeah. we knew that they were going to be these like mad collector's cars. Because back then, oh, yeah. back then an EK9 was like a weird car. It was like a, like a, a like a kink car almost, wasn't it? Like, a, you know, yeah. oh, you, you've got a Honda EK9. Fucking they're crap. You know, they're only a 1.6. I'm like, oh, we'll show you yeah. what, they, what crap yeah, is. Well, you know mate. what I mean? <laughs> All right, mate. <laughs> let's go. On, let's go on the circuit, shall we? Let's see how big you are, mate. Yeah. Like, and I still have this, I still have this banter now with some of the younger lads, like Lee Lockwood and, um jesse and all that lot i mean jesse out of all of the young lads really appreciates the hondas he fell in love with the honda world and really gets it like but <clears throat> like lee never got it and like he was like i'll fucking smash you on track i was like all right and he was like i was like all right if you think you will bring whatever you've got out to a circuit and we'll see who actually smashes who because i've got a car that you have to have massive bollocks to drive fast and i've got massive bollocks mate so you know, me and this car are are one. Like, so if you really want in your Clio to come out and see if you can actually keep yeah, up, he's, good luck. He wouldn't bring his Clio. He'd be bringing his M3 now. I mean, and even even an M3, mate, I wouldn't be worried with him driving it. Like, I think he can probably pedal. <laughs> I think he can probably pedal, but I don't think Jaws he can fired, pedal as mate. good as me Jaws in a Civic. Fired. I mean, my <laughs> Civic, man, like, you, it's so hard. I need to go out and get some seat time again in it because I'm so used to rear-wheel drive, like, you know, and drifting. So it is like a different world. Yeah. Stepping back into it, I couldn't fucking heel toe anymore. I was like, I can't yeah. fucking get the revs right. And I was like, I, I can't do it anymore. But back in the day, I used to be able to do it fucking spot on. And I was like, I drive an automatic M3. I've got a DCT M3. Yeah. I'm glad I got the DCT M3 after hearing about the manual gearboxes. Like, because, you know, everyone says how disappointing they are. Is it? So, like, you know, the long throw thing. Like, for me, I don't think I'd have got on with it coming from Hondas and especially S2000 driving them yeah. and Civics. And my, I mean, I've got an S80 gearbox, an Integra Type R gearbox on my Civic. Which is and amazing. I, I wouldn't change the setup. I wouldn't. I love the I love the differential in it. I love I love everything. I think I might have to adjust it because it's obviously a B sixteen with a B eighteen gearbox, so the gearing isn't perfect. But like as just a track car, like it's super fun and it's su it's just super fun. That's the only way to explain it. And like, yeah, M threes will blitz past me on a straight, but I am on that ass in a corner because he has to start breaking at three hundred yards. I get to break it like seventy five. Spoon breaks <laughs> AO forty eight Rs and a car that weighs how much? They weigh eight hundred and ninety four kilograms. I, yeah, I think with, that's it, yeah. With glass windows. <laughs> yeah, glass, yeah. yeah, that shit stops on a dime piece. Like, don't get me wrong, I love Lee Lockwood. There is absolutely no beef. I, I consider him a good friend. Like. Like, like, and that's why I banter with him about, yeah, I'll smash you on track. But like, legit, if it was like my M3 versus your Civic, let's do it. I'd be like, we're doing it at my home track. Like, you've got the massive advantage here. Massive so we're doing advantage. it at Snetterton. So, you know, and you'd have an advantage there because there's two very long straights on that circuit. Yeah. But you're going to have to keep your foot in it for them corners, baby, because I, I don't. <laughs> you know, so, you know, let's, you, need, you need to hold on tight because, uh, you know, my little Civic does perform really well. And I think that will always be what will keep me in the Japanese car scene. I think that's what will always keep. I mean, as, as time goes on, I pray for all of us that we are successful so we can have places to store these cars and to show the generations that are coming up. Hey, look, yeah, I know these petrol. are like, I know these are asshole prices. <laughs> Mate, when they say you can't buy petrol, I'm buying a tanker and I'm fucking storing that shit. Like that, yeah. you know. I don't I'm, think it's that far away. I mean, I think the next 20, 30 years, it will not be an easy thing to get. I, I think it will. I think they're going to try and persuade oh, you into oh. electric cars, but there's going to be places yeah. that will always sell it. It's, you can't of get rid of... Synthetic fuels, aren't they? Yeah. We'll get e yeah. E85, potentially, that's what I think. Yeah, it will, there'll be synthetic fuels. Yeah. 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 It'll be like, like people say, it'll be like the horse, won't it? Like... People stop using horse for labour and then they it yeah. becomes use a, it for pleasure instead. Exactly, yeah. So that's so, what will happen. We'll all we all might drive an electric car in the day, but yeah, things like, like imagine if they said, okay, like Goodwood Revival is not going to happen because we're not allowed to drive petrol cars or the industry that it relies on with motorsport for classic stuff is massive. It's yeah. I don't think it will just stop. I mean, it might become a bit more difficult, but you'll probably get. 
I think you'll get a special license or you'll get a special yeah. tax where your petrol car will have X amount of miles a year or you can only drive at the weekends and yeah. it'll become more of a recreation than a A yeah, to B could, type thing. Could be right. I'm, well, I'm not gonna lie though. I'm not I'm not against the electric car movement. Like I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't electric cars are daily, no problem. I'm yeah, I don't I don't want them to take yeah. my yeah. petrol cars yeah. away, my fun stuff, because like that's kind of how I get my kick, you know, that's where I exactly. get my enjoyment. Yeah. But I, I love that Honda E. Like that was the first oh, mate, modern cool Honda. That, that was the first modern Honda I got excited about. Same, yeah. I think it's cool. The Since the FD2. Yeah, cool. yeah like Apparently not selling, though. They're not. Oh shit, well, that means they're gonna be really expensive all yeah, the time then. I'll, I was <laughs> Yeah, I've got a friend who works at the Honda garage in Northampton. I went down the other day to pick some parts up and he this was what three or four weeks ago and he said they've only sold three of them. In total. Wow. Which I, yeah, three. Oh. But maybe there's one, yeah. there's one in the village that I live in, and it's so cool. It's that really nice they blue, cool. like electric blue color. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Cool. maybe like the S2000, the Honda, like always, have peaked too early ahead of the time. You know what I mean, yeah, like they've, yeah. they've built this brilliant little electric car that no one's yeah. ready for. Like, I haven't got an electric charge point in my house. Do you know what I mean? No. Like, that is legit, like the sort of car that I would look at and be like, Can I fit the dog in the back? Yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. then why not? Like, it looks cool. I'm still gonna be able to lower yeah. it and put wheels on it, would, charge it. Up. Yeah, for I'd... daily for daily driving, I don't care if it's electric. It makes no difference. No, to me. same. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think yeah, they're obviously going to have to improve like the fast charging shit because like if I wanted yeah. to come up to you guys and add an electric four by four, fuck me, it's going to take me That's forever. Coming. Do you know what I mean? That's like, coming. Hyundai yeah. have already got fast charging ports in Korea, so they've got it done, and it looks amazing yeah. as well. Like I, I love the idea of the future, like because you know, like got back in the day, people could have been like, I'm not buying a car, my horse works fine. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Fuck exactly. that. I like my horse. My horse doesn't cost me anything to run. Like that car cost me lots of money to run. I don't want that. But now look at everyone. Like everyone has a fucking car. Like so, I don't hate the idea. And I did see there was a there was a supercar out of LA that is running off of synthetic fuel. They've made of petrol yeah. replacement fuel. That, I heard the, this. Yeah, and it it's apparently it's got like two thousand horsepower and shit. So it's like, well, if that shit's yeah. working, then why wouldn't they be able to change it? Just like these scientists are smart as fuck. Uh, my brain is not that big. Do you know what I mean? Like when it comes to like this yeah. smart shit. Elon uh, Musk will sort it out. Just leave it to Elon Musk. No, nah, he won't, yeah. mate. If he had the chance, he'll fuck us all <laughs> off the Mars with electric true. cars, mate. He doesn't give a shit about the old stuff. <laughs> like you need to get like m m one of yeah, Elon Musk's little fucking Jay gurus Leno. that love yeah, Jay, Jay Leno. Jay Leno. <laughs> the battery work. That's that's what how it will help because he'll just make. I mean, he's on his. He's, they're on about their second generation of battery, aren't they? So are they? If they get if they get electric cars where you can do. Well, the Porsche isn't far off. The take on they're horrific money, but yeah. once they get to 500 mile range in a little car that we can buy for 30 grand, and then in a few years they're 15 or grand, yeah, that's yeah. then petrol done. that's petrol done. As long as petrol is a weekend thing or fueled yes. cars is still a hobby thing, like Just they think, can't get rid of it together. Think how drastic the world is going to change when we don't rely on fossil fuels. Yeah, like, think well, how well, weird well, it's going to be. Well, like, you, we still the need fossil fuels is. to make the electricity. Yeah, but you know what I mean, though. Like, I mean, like, you know what I mean, though, because there will be eventually that yeah. that will change. Yeah, yeah. that It'll will happen. change eventually because it's going to run out, yeah. so they're going to have to change it. And then yeah. places that are massive because of it, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Dubai, what are they going to fucking? They're going to rely on tourism. Do you know what I mean? And like, yeah. I mean, we're pretty much advised not to go to Saudi Arabia, aren't we? <laughs> like, they're, they're like, yeah. this is like human rights issues and shit. Whereas Dubai is a bit different. I think they're way more westernized in terms of, you know, culture for the most part. Um, it's going to be yeah. really interesting, I think. And, yeah. you know, yeah, there's, I don't I... think there's anything we can really sign out on the price of the Japanese cars because it's happening. I think it's going to be this way. I don't think there's going to be a cap on this shit. Like, look at Escort Cosworth. We, we probably all have looked at them at 30 grand and been like, that was, that's the most expensive they're going to get. They're selling for yeah. how much now? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So well, that's, that's one of the things I was going to say. Um, do you think the prices are going to drop, or do you think they're going to stay steady? Or I think they're going to. Gonna I think they're just going to keep going up. I don't. I think they'll cap. I think they will get to a point where a GTR won't sell for any more than it is. You know, like after yeah, four GTRs yeah. are going like they're going up at like a price of like fifteen grand every three months. Do you know what I mean? Like the way they the rising, but I, I think there'll be a point where I mean like. I saw a Civic SIR for sale on Facebook, a white one. It was it was a gorgeous car. It was up for sale for like 12 grand. And the guy was like, I'm not budging on the car. But it's still for sale now for eight grand. So yeah. he's had to drop the price and it's still not buying, selling. Yeah. So if people start realizing, well, that car's been up for sale for a fucking long time, 
You know what I mean? Like, and I, I need the money now. I'm just going to put it up for six grand just to get that six grand in. And then someone will see that that sold for six grand and be like, all right, well, that one sold for six grand, but this one's up for eight grand. It's not selling. Do you know what I mean? There might be like a GTR that will be up for sale. Or like that NSX that I said about in Hong Kong was up for sale for 850,000 pounds. Like that's yeah. never going to sell for that money unless it goes to a billionaire. <laughs> yeah. That 850,000 pounds is the equivalent to 850 quid to them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I think there's going to be a, a correction in the market a little bit. I think the, I think the prices are going to keep going up, but I think the last year since basically Corona has happened, um, the prices have went up drastically. I mean, the last yeah. year, the prices have like went up like 10, 15 grand on some cars, and I don't think yeah. that's quite right. I think they're going to come down quite quickly in the next year and kind of settle and then kind of creep back up again. Yeah. But, Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. You know what hasn't happened yet? The thing that I... Like, you know, people like Tom Hartley, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe McCarry, all these high-end car sales places haven't started selling R34s and stuff yet. Mm. And really? like people like Chris Harris's Collecting Cars podcast, I don't think, I think I've listened to most of them, I don't think there's been one yet that really talks about Japanese cars. Yeah. So I still think there's a massive group of people that probably aren't aware or haven't of the magic. Into the of Japanese cars being a collector thing. I know there is a lot of people that have, mm. but there's probably there, I think there might be some point where some dealers get into this and think, well, hang on a minute, these are these cars are selling for a lot of money. We need to get well, in on this. They're gonna see Harlow Jap autos at some point. Like then exactly, cars get yeah. shared around Facebook. And let's be yeah. frank, like does they're anybody stopped. do it better than it, them? Like realistically, like, the Japanese cars, they are the Joe Mascari of Japanese cars. They are the yeah. Tom Hartley of Japanese. Yeah. Like you, they've got a 40 grand freaking A86 there now. And it's not yeah, even I mean, a cool I one. My, I got my GTR from them. Did you really? Yeah, so did you so did yeah, you yeah. Like that, yeah. like I actually messaged them um, saying, could I come down and do a YouTube video? Um, could I come down and please, you know, look around your stock and maybe do some videos. I don't need to drive them, but if you could take me out on them. And they said, we don't allow influencers. And I hate that word. Like, youtubers around yeah oh god it makes i'm not an influencer i am a fucking car guy with a youtube channel like that i'm not here to influence anyone like i appreciate it if people support my sponsors (laughs) so they sponsor me again but um you know for the most part i'm just like look this is what i'm doing um and i i messaged them and they basically just replied look look, we won't have you down just out of security risk like we don't want people to you like see online all of the stock like i know they go we yeah. know we share stuff on facebook but it's different like to having a someone yeah. walking around the showroom showing you how to get in showing you the fight they're like we don't we really can't have that because of the value yeah. of the stock here and i like literally held my hand i said look guys that's fine <laughs> i'm happy you've said no you know what i mean like it's it's fine i completely get it and um, they have some amazing vehicles and they had a millennium Millennium Jade, is it? Is that a Nissan color? Yeah. Sorry, I'm yeah, really yeah, tired, yeah. so I can't remember. So we're filming this quite late, and we've been talking a long time. Um, but <laughs> they had a Millennium Jade R34 GTR that someone I know was actually going to buy. He offered them £110,000 for it. He's a very affluent man. They've done very well in life, and he wanted to buy it. And he had a blue one as well, and he was like, I want the, the Millennium Jade. It looks sick. Like It's a nurse spec, I think it was. And uh, the guy said no to the offer. Like I think it was up for 120, and the guy was like, nah. Yeah. But I think they sold it for 135,000 the other day. Yeah. So like they sold it for more than they were advertising it for. Yeah. And like wow. to me, it's just like, man, like to me, I'm obviously butthurt that I never got to own an R34 GTR because... 10 years ago, you'd look at them at fucking 18 grand and be like, yeah, I can probably get one of them in a few years. But it seems like yeah. as I've got closer to the price, the price kept going up. It kept going away. And I was like, yeah. oh, come on, I can't, I can't fucking grab that shit. And it's the same with NSXs. I almost, yeah. I don't think I ever told you this because I thought you were going to bite my head off, but like, I almost bought one when I had that white 325 BMW. Do you remember yeah. I had the E92, yeah, yeah, my yeah. first E92? I was yeah. around my girlfriend at the time's house and I was just searching and I found an orange one for sale and it was fucking gorgeous and it was up for twenty six thousand pound and i was like i like that color i was like i could afford that i was like holy shit so i googled the number plate and it come up with a thread of how it was a cat b and the guy had like managed to wrangle it so he could get it on the road and was resetting i was like i can't buy it that sounds terrible yeah i was like that sounds dodgy as fuck i was like i can't give that amount of money for that so if it was like a cat d I'd have probably yes. been like, yo, I'm kind of interested in that because like a cat yeah. D, a cat C, it's not probably yeah. small damage. It's not end of the world yeah. sort of fucking damage, is it? Like, but when it's a cat B, what? when they're like, yo, don't put this back on the road, and some nah. guy's got it back on the road. Like there was a whole build thread of it, and the guy had done a great job. I was like, I can't. Nah. I can't it's too do expensive it, a know? car. 
yeah. but like now I, I mean I don't say I regret not buying any cars but I when I bought my DC2 I paid 8,800 pounds for it mm-hmm. um and it done 50,000 miles. And the only reason I didn't buy an NSX when they were 10 grand is because I wouldn't have been able to insure it because I was too young. Yeah. Oh, man. You think they were... <laughs> and the cars, 15, 15 grand cars, weren't they? It's fucking crazy. They were, ten, they were 10 grand cars. There was a few, like, there wasn't many at 10, but I remember seeing a couple of, like, a three-litre early 90, 1990 mm-hmm. manual car, 10 grand. And you think, oh, why don't you just buy that? Buy a crappy Fiesta to drive around in and keep it. Just put it somewhere. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. You don't think about things. You the think, thing oh, is, I'll get, would you have kept I'll it? You probably would have kept years. it. That's uh, another thing. You probably wouldn't have kept it. Do you know what I mean? It would have probably been like uh, a car that you're just like, well, I'll get another one for 10 grand. Like, I bought this one for 10 yeah, grand. It might be 12 yeah. grand next. You know, like, yeah. it's yeah, th- those days are gone. But I think, like, we just have to be aware of it now and, like, keep your, yeah. like, we've lived that. So, like, that's why yeah. I keep my eyes open on these GT86s and stuff because I like those. I think they are cool yeah. cars. Yeah. Like, oh. They are a cool modern car that was built, and I don't particularly like the engine in it. But no. it's not, it's not that's something that can change. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, an engine uh, to me is now, now I understand how it all goes, you know, works. I don't know everything about them, but I have friends that do. Take boy, you're yeah. one of the first I ring when anything goes wrong on Hondas. I'm like, oh, fuck, like, like you're <laughs> the guy I bring and pay to align it. I drove it two and a half hours for you to align it. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, I have the good people around me to do it all. And I think that if I see yeah. those and I'm like, I think one day like these are the new EP3. I think these well, are going to... The thing I like about the GT86 is it was literally made as a modern A86. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, all, it's yeah. all the fun stuff that I like on my old 86s in a new car. Yeah. And yeah. everyone that bangs on about being underpowered, all of our fucking cars are underpowered. You you fucking touch yourself exactly. over Corollas, mate, and they're slow as balls. Low. Like, yeah. but they're fucking awesome. Like, speed, exactly. speed doesn't equal the best. Like, no, just, no. I learned no. that. I learned that a long time yeah. ago. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that I it's just finding a car that you find magical. And even if you're listening to this and you don't give a fuck about Japanese cars, it, whatever you're into and you love it and you're passionate about it, don't be put off going for that dream of ah, oh, I can afford it now. I'm just going to tuck it away. Don't be ashamed to do that. Like, because like, look at yeah. the price of Volkswagen Corrado VR6s and stuff. They yeah. were seven hundred pound of like fucking few years ago. Now you're fucking yeah. not going to get one for under six I, grand. Do you know what I mean? Same scrap thing cars. Yeah, same as Golf Mark ones and stuff. Like they yeah. were all getting thrown away, and now like yeah. because of that, it's shot the value of all the other ones up. So I think like yeah. I, I I just I'm in a very fortunate position where I I bought a couple of very now rare cars when they were cheap. <laughs> yeah, you're on the ladder. You're like us. We're all on the ladder of these yeah. cars yeah. going up in price, so we can jump yeah. off the ladder and buy another one. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas I think I would be very disappointed now if I'd save up twenty five grand and buy an S fifteen. I think if I'd pay twenty five grand for a Sylvia, like out in one go, mm. I'd be like, man, this is a bit shit. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I, as soon as you, I think I'd be like, probably should have looked at them fast German cars for this sort of money. Like, do you know what I mean? Because like, I, I, I don't, I don't actually think the s15 and that are actually that good like i i don't like them as road cars and that's why i've never been that fussed about using mine on the road i think they're yeah. fucking awesome drift cars that that's where i'm like this is the best at this thing so that's what i'm going to use it for um and that's why i feel a bit bad seeing all these kids saving up for fucking years to buy one and then you know maybe they'll <laughs> love it maybe they'll they're, they're different to me and they're like oh this is the best driver's car ever but like i would all day go for a dc2 over a s13 well, s13 I, I S15 look like oh unbelievable amazing they look one amazing of, one of the greatest looking coupes ever designed. ever that ever FDRX7 S2000 NSX like there's there's not many but the S15 is a cracking looking car yeah, yeah. if it's a spare car with a full aero kit they look fine yeah stunning I mean Morgan's got one hasn't he and he didn't pay very much for that I mean he did he paid good money at the time for it like half of the EK9 but now I reckon if he sold that car, I've told him to keep hold of it for a little while longer. I reckon oh, he yeah. will. I reckon he will maybe like times his money by six when he goes to yeah. sell that. And now is not yeah. the time to sell an S15. No, right? no, no. no. And I've years. told him that as well. I've said hold on until they're available in America because we. I know people that yeah. can get it over there. I've got the doors, and I mean I could get it over there now because I'm Florida based, aren't I? So yeah. I'm like, yeah. I've got all the dodgy fucking imports <laughs> over here there's the crime levels in florida are so oh, high man. for everything else they don't <laughs> care about the cars they're like yo we've got some guy chewing on bath salts over here we need to go and deal with this zombie looking fella like your cars from where who cares Fuck right. off. all you the other males like... spec car 34s yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so like there's there's obviously you can probably tell that florida is the place to be if you want to have dodgy japanese cars <laughs> you know like well, well, they'll move there isn't it yeah a lot of them all I the think boosted so. boys right and yeah. right care, all that yeah lot. yeah yeah because they can have the fucking naughty whip and uh yeah. you know <laughs> Uh, I I also heard we're gonna have to close this up soon because it's been two hours I think since we've been talking. But um, I th- I think I heard and I don't know how true this is. I d- I, d- I don't want my word being taken as gospel on this because this is just hearsay that I heard. But I heard that soon they're gonna stop selling, allowing certain cars go through the auctions for export in Japan to wow. stop them going out of the country now because they're becoming so few and far between. They're like yeah. we're losing well, our car heritage here. I'd heard yeah. something along those lines, but it was. It was more from like dealers have actually stopped selling cars to foreigners now. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's not not all the dealers, but like yeah, certain yeah. dealers have been like, "Look, we don't have a lot of these cars. Let's keep them here now." Which yeah. I get. I, I, I do yeah. get it. I do understand it. Well, I mean, if you had a very rich American turning up, going, "I'm going to buy ten of your eighty eight sixes," you're going to be like, "Why? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yes. we're going to sell it, send them to America, and make seventy five thousand fucking pounds on them." I'm like, exactly. Oh, I, think right, Jap- I, I think the Japanese guys have went. Why are we selling this to you for like ten grand, and you're just going to sell it for like twenty? We might as yeah. well sell it for twenty. Just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I I do get it. I think it's like one of those things. To summarize, for me, we, in fact, no, you summarize first. How do you feel about this in like a couple of sentences? Go, unless you want me to first. You go. Okay. <laughs> How do I feel about this? I am always going to be a little bit butt hurt that some of my dream JDM cars from my teenage years, from Need for Speed Underground, and all the you know, the Gran Turismo that and that, that, yeah, that, that made me yeah. fall completely head over heels in love with these cars are out of reach for now. Like, I think it's also made me go, yo, if I want this shit, I'm going to have to work my fucking ass off. And like, I have to fully be aware that I'm spending potentially six figures on a car that was worth four figures <laughs> when I was a teenager. But I think it's because I truly, genuinely love this shit that I would do it. If I yeah. if it wasn't like life altering, you know, like getting a divorce because I've done it, sort of thing, you know what I mean? Like it's like one of those like, yeah, we can afford this. I want it. I've worked hard for it. I'm gonna go for it. I also feel very lucky that I'm in a situation where I have the cars and I'm gonna carry on enjoying them as I always have, um, to make sure that people can see them being used like an absolute asbo. Like they've that's what made me fall in love with them. Watching them, yeah. Smokey in his fucking. Was it a Supra he come over here in? 198 mile an hour. On the M25, weren't it? Like, what a fucking nutter. When that, when it, Fast Car or Max Power that brought him over to do that. Max Power. Max, Max Power. Power, yeah. Yep. How On badass is that? Like, they've bought yeah. over a Japanese tuner to go and do 200 mile an hour. On, is yeah. it the A1, did you say it was? I can't remember. The A1, yeah. Like, that sort of shit was the stuff that I saw growing up that shaped me. Obviously, I yeah. we didn't have YouTube. We didn't have anything like that. Like, so I can understand why these kids are being influenced into golf hours because there's so many popular people that get massive views that do it. And like, I, you know, I can't blame them. Like, it'd be as as ignorant as me to say that as it'd be like, oh, fucking, what an idiot when I was 14 dreaming about owning an EG6 Civic. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, not how it is. So I do get it. I understand why. It's, you know, it's one of those things. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep loving the cars I have and appreciating them. And I think it keeps. It keeps me making sure mine exist. I think, yeah. like before, I probably would have tucked the Civic away and been like, eh, we'll, cut, we'll see it again in 10 years, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, it is what it is. But now there's only X amount left. It's like, well, let's keep her nice. Let's keep her out. Let's take it to a show. Let's let people look at it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's my summary on that. Yeah. If you can add anything to it, you haven't got to if you don't want, but. Uh... Yeah, I just think it's a similar thing that I'm. I mean, if you grow up in a different era, you won't know what it's like. We grew up in our era, but I'm glad that we grew up in the time when life was a little simpler, but there was still enough tech to, like you say, we had Gran Turismo, we had the Max Power era, we had all the stuff where you could, you got an insight, but it was not like today. Um, and yeah, we like you say, we might all be a bit butthurt that we don't get to buy these cars cheap anymore, but... Imagine when we go to track days in 10, 15 years and we've still got these Civics and whatever you've got, you've got your Corolla. And I just love, like, even my daughter and my little son to come along and they're of an age where they can come out in the car or whatever. And you're that guy that, like, I like going to a track day and seeing the old guy in his old Alpha Julia. That yeah, he's yeah, probably yeah. yeah, I'm the same. Level. I'm the same. 
And they're, they're the cool, they're the cool guys, not the guys in their new GT threes, although they're mega cars. The, I like the old boys in the old shit. And yeah, yeah. I mean, I, real quick. I can't wait to do that and be doing that and still have an old crappy car. That's like, man, that's cool. Like that's when I was I think, when I was yeah. up with you having my Civic aligned. There was a three million pound Porsche GT RS, GT two RS, two. right? Yeah. Whatever it was, like some crazy three million pound Porsche. Next to that was some was it a Lancia rally car, like an old shit weird Lancia. I can't even remember what it was. It wasn't even a cool Lancia. And I looked at the Porsche and I took some photos of the Porsche and I was like, wow, that is like a work of art. But this Lancia thing, what the fuck is this? Because I want this. Like this is cool. And I remember just looking around. I was looking around the whole thing. I can shut my eyes and I can picture that whole car, even the interior. And I was just like, that was what I was attracted to. That weird fucking Lancia thing. And then that um the Evo outside. You remember I was like, Do you know what? I'm sure I recognize that Evo. That was yeah. my friend Max's old car. That's why I recognized it. Yeah, I was like, what? I was like, Max, is this your car? Like, you know, like stuff yeah. like that. So I, I completely get that. And I, yeah, that, that same thing. You know, the old boy in his like in his car that he's always used and always will use yeah. is, is the, like, yeah, not, that is it. not scared of using it. That's the yeah. thing. I think people are gonna get if I, if someone spends a huge amount of money on whatever it is that's really old, they're gonna be a bit worried about using it. We're not gonna. We we I'm not going to have an issue with taking it out and enjoying it as it should be. Yeah, 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 definitely. That's the good thing. That's the, the thing I'm going to look at the most or think that we'll get to enjoy the most. We haven't got to worry about values of it. Because yeah. to us, we paid two grand for it, five grand for it. We didn't pay 30 grand, so. Yeah. Yeah. Going to add Strang? Um, not much other than really probably the same as you. I'm quite glad that we grew up and we did. And we got to experience yeah. all these cars. I'm the same as you guys. It's a, it's a little bit butthurt, I suppose, that they're so expensive now. But we can't really complain because we got to no. enjoy these cars for yeah. years yeah. and years. And all these new guys won't be able to do that. So I think, as you said, the best thing you can do is take them to shows and actually drive them instead of just having them parked in a garage and nobody gets to see them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Yeah. Well, boys, can you both give your uh, socials a shout out if you want, where people can find you, what you want them to follow from the account if anybody's listened this far? Um, <laughs> promote yourself a little bit. Uh, just tag boy on Instagram. That's it, really. Nothing else. No Facebooks. And then, well, Northampton Motorsport as well. If anyone wants to follow that, that's where I work and what I do. I post a lot of work stuff on my Instagram anyway, but yeah, tag boy mainly. And you're starting to do some videos as well, aren't you, on there? Yeah, try yeah, try to take a string out of your bar, I think, and yeah. just try and, try and do it and see what happens. Why not? Why not? Strang? Uh, you can get me on Final Boss UK on Facebook and Final Boss UK on Instagram as well. Boom. And you can uh, see some cool Japanese cars. And weird memorabilia. You and, 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 and weird, on weird fucking in fact, wait, wait, gloves and shit. Something, I've got something really funny here. That You'd buy his dripping condom, wouldn't you, mate? If there was one for sale on fucking Yahoo auctions, you would buy it. <laughs> Do you want to see something hilarious, right? This, this is fucking this... old, old condom. I'm deleting no, no, from no. this conversation. This okay. is this is legit. This is legit. Are they spark plugs? Rubber bands. Elastic rubber bands. bands. I've seen them. Nismo yeah. rubber bands. Yep, How much legit. did you pay for them? For anybody that's listening, he's just shown us a box that looks like spark plugs, but it's rubber bands made by Nismo. Yeah. That was a lot of money, weren't they? Nah, they weren't. I actually bought them just because I thought it was so ridiculous that Nismo <laughs> even made them. You're like, no one would buy them, so I better. <laughs> Brilliant. All right, boys, yes. thank you so much for your time this evening. Um, yep, we've been on here a long good. time. I'll try my yeah. absolute best to uh, get some form of um, uh, like cut up of this conversation as well, because I think yeah. two and a half bit hours is a long time to be talking for people to listen. So hopefully we can do some like block sections of that. Um, yeah, I really appreciate yeah. you joining me and yeah. No worries. It's been fun. Been, yeah, it's been, been good. a good chat. And uh, yeah. uh, th please hit subscribe or follow for the podcast on whatever you're watching and listening to. This is the normal type of podcast I want to make, not the screaming and shouting at YouTubers and how much money they're charging for <laughs> sponsor posts. So like, uh, I know I got a lot of people whinging. I haven't even checked the comments on my last one since it banged a little bit because I was just like, I know we're just going to get the old fucking dick riders in there, so I'm not even going to look. So uh, this is the normal type of podcast. We're going to have a lot more guests. These two will probably be back on again in the future, talking about stories and stuff, because we haven't been able to do that. This has been much more focused around the pricing of the cars. So uh, thank you very much for listening, guys, and uh, hopefully you'll tune in again. Peace. No worries. Cheers, bye. Cheers, bye.